There were already ten minutes left before the end of the English language exam. Panic in the audience began to gain momentum. An empty form meant an automatic retake. No one understood why there were still no spurs and who should have made them. Didn't Jim promise to prepare everything and save their entire group from failure? The answer was not long in coming, and after looking at it, the group realized that they were doomed to failure. Let's rewind a little to the beginning. Our hero's name is Jim, and he is a student at a linguistic university. All that makes him happy is food and drink, especially the double portion of rice in the cafeteria at lunch. He has no money for other food, he can only afford the most ordinary white rice. Jim's appearance left much to be desired. The white t-shirt he wore every day, ordinary pants, all this did not make him the most chic fashionista. The day came to retake the exam, Jim knew that he had an ace up his sleeve for today. Empty eyes and drowsiness are clearly not what Jim wanted to feel in the last minutes of the exam. Mrs. Claus said with a slight smile that Jim wouldn't get anything done waiting for the time to run out. She also added that he has no influence here and that he is a poor student who will not pass her course. Jim is a burden to the entire institution. Jim looked straight into her eyes and said that she would be surprised, but the answers would be in the air any minute. At that moment, there was such a noise and whistle that the classroom windows almost jumped out. These were the long-awaited answers to the exam, but how they ended up in the air. The helicopter with answers to questions literally hovered on the third floor of the university. Mrs. Claus thought that this couldn't be true. Could the boy really be able to pass her exam? Those same answers were attached to the helicopter. The surprised student stood in a stupor looking at all this. Jim shouted joyfully that it was time for him to hurry up and finish writing the exam. The shouts of his classmates that Jim was the best lasted for several seconds. He really saved everyone. The main character said that he had to go. He was afraid to be late to the dining room because today he had delicious rice for lunch. Mrs. Claus could not find a place for herself. She screamed nonstop for everyone to stop cheating. Mrs. Claus told Jim that he automatically gets a zero for cheating on the exam. Someone from the window shouted questioningly about the money and also that the transaction had been completed and payment was expected. Opening the window and taking out a red bag full of money, Jim threw it towards where the helicopter was located. Jim, looking at the tornado of money in the air, shouted that there was no need for change. No one had seen so much money here. The fallen bills did not take long to appear, and now every student was filling his pockets full of red pieces of paper. In the surprised and empty look of Mrs., Clause one could read how Jim got so much money, and also what was going on here. Jim said goodbye to the teacher and said that he needed to hurry up. If he was delayed, there might not be any free seats on the bus. When the guy left the university, he immediately realized how difficult it was. Suddenly, a message appeared in front of Jim's eyes that the task of using 150,000 yuan in any way during the exam was completed. This all-in spending system appeared exactly a week ago. It was a typical Monday morning. Jim was standing in line at the bank. The main character looked at his insignificant pile of money and realized that saving was very difficult. Jim's salary was too small to meet all his needs. The only thought that crossed my mind was that even a robber would not look at this pitiful pile of money. How suddenly shots were heard and now the robber's pistol was pointed at the crowd of people. Jim looked at the robbers and could not believe that his thought out loud had become prophetic. The gang boss pointed the gun at Jim and told him not to move. The entire bank building was captured by criminals. Civilians found themselves easy hostages in their hands. The situation was gaining momentum, and Jim, looking around, was looking for ways to get out of this situation. Turning his head again, he suddenly came across the robber's pistol. The gang boss asked him what he was doing. Jim emphatically shouted back that his ass was itchy and he couldn't take it anymore. Jim had his last money in his pocket, and he couldn't say goodbye to it so easily. Suddenly, a girl's screams were heard in the middle of the hall. The resourceful guy quickly took advantage of the situation and tried to escape. But it was so slow and stupid that the robber, pointing the barrel of his gun, showed him the opposite place. In the center of the hall, another gang robber grabbed a cute girl by the hand. The boss asked in surprise how a guy could harass a girl right in the middle of a robbery. The second robber replied that this girl was too beautiful and he could not help himself. Pushing away from the robber, the girl said that she would rather die than be with such a scoundrel. At this moment, the main character still managed to find the emergency switch and open the door. As he was about to run, he heard the screams of a girl who was able to stop him. Jim asked not to touch the girl, 
This girl turned out to be his class teacher, Teacher Gray. The main character with a sweet smile on his face whispered to the robber that if he was going to rob someone, then let it be that girl. The robber was very surprised and angry when he saw that Jim managed to open the door. The main character just wanted to talk to the gang boss when suddenly a shot rang out. It was the robber's shot straight into Jim's heart. Will the main character just die like that? Jim can't just die. At least he needs to spend the last 200 yuan before dying. Jim received a new task. Spend a million in three minutes. The reward is avoiding death and complete immunity. The robber turned to the main character with a question about what he was planning and doing. The guy's surprise knew no bounds. He found himself exactly three minutes before death. He has a few minutes left to change his future. The gang boss shouted that the boy was too suspicious. The robber warned the main character that if he looked at him again, a bullet would fly straight into his forehead. Little Jim was furious because this robber had already shot him. The main character nevertheless dared and looked the criminal in the eyes. The robber asked Jim to take his tongue out of his ass and say what he wanted. The protagonist's index finger pointed at the second criminal, after which Jim added that he dropped several bills. The robber could not understand what kind of money we were talking about. The boss of the criminal gang told Jim to show what kind of money we were talking about. When the main character was moving towards the criminal, the same Miss Gray was hiding among all the hostages. Jim winked at her. At some point, Miss Gray did not understand what her student was doing here. Jim asked the robber where the money was, which he tied to his leg. Hanging his head down, the robber was horrified to see the money that the main character was talking about. The gang boss did not expect such betrayal from what he then thought were his comrades. Jim said sarcastically that he didn't understand why he hid so much money in his pants when they were about to leave the bank with bags full of bills. The stunned robber did not understand where this money came from because it had nothing to do with him. Jim thought it would be a good idea to find the robber's bag, otherwise he wouldn't make much money in his pants. The boss's partner shouted nonstop that everything that was happening was some kind of trick or trick. Standing proudly in front of his class teacher, the main character said that he was just a good guy. Jim's game among the robbers was just beginning, and then his second plan matured. He asked Miss Gray to play along with him since the gang boss was not so stupid. Jim, with a quick wave of his hand, took out a fresh wad of bills from behind the teacher's back, because the money could appear in any specified place by the user of the all-in system, the amount was also determined by Jim. The main character shouted that this money was hidden specifically for the third robber and pointed his finger at him. A tense silence hung over the heads of all the criminals. The third robber couldn't believe his eyes because he didn't do anything. He just followed the boss's instructions. Looking at all his comrades, the boss said that they had always been unscrupulous, and when it came to the big deal, they decided to take more bills. Trying to justify themselves with empty words, the gang understood that they could not do anything because the facts spoke against them. The boss thoughtfully asked his partners whether this money really came out of thin air. Suddenly, Jim shouted to the gang leader that he was doing them wrong. The main character pointed his hand at a huge wad of money that magically appeared right behind the boss. The partner doubted the ideality of Butcher's boss, which he openly told his partner about. The enraged boss pointed the gun at his partner and saying that how could he call him by name, pulled his finger off the trigger. And then a shootout began among those very comrades who were going together to a big cause. The whistling of bullets, smoke and broken glass, just a couple more minutes and no one will be left alive. After some time, the shootout ended, and the thick smoke from the gun began to clear. Jim thought it was all over. Hugging his Miss Gray tightly, he realized that he was the one who became her savior. The main character raised his head up. Before his eyes, he saw a trunk that was directed in his direction. It was the gun of the gang boss. He survived and now wants to avenge his comrades. There was little time. Jim's whole life flashed before his eyes in those five seconds. But suddenly the main character's class teacher, Miss Gray, covered him with her large and soft body. At that moment, she thought that a good teacher could take a bullet for a student and she was ready. All the hostages in the bank froze in anticipation. Another second and the school will lose the best teacher of the university. Shocked by the situation, the robber was confused for a moment and did not understand what to do next. Miss Gray wondered if a sense of justice had made him change his mind. She is ready to die without regrets for Jim's sake. Miss Gray said that she was not in pain at all and then looked down. 
A huge wad of money suddenly appeared in front of the equally huge figure of the teacher. The stack of fresh bills was so huge that even a lead bullet could not break through this monetary barrier. The robber was very surprised and did not understand what was happening here, wondering if that guy could have done all this. Unable to believe his words, he fired a test shot from the pistol. At that same second, there was a huge explosion. It was the explosion of the robber's very pistol. Splinters of the pistol flew straight into the robber's eyes. Bloody hands held his head, but the job was already done. Jim shouted loudly that it was karma that overtook him, and his gun exploded on its own. But only one main character knew about his capabilities. He revived the money right at the barrel of a robber's gun. Miss Gray asked the student to remove his hand. Jim's hand was right on her figure and was in no hurry to move away. Blushing slightly, Jim apologized to the teacher. He was very pleased. A huge wad of money was right in front of the guy, slowly pulling his hand towards it. But what's the matter? As soon as Jim touched them, they immediately disappeared. At that moment, there was a knock of open doors and the city police immediately responded to the call. As if in a beautiful dance, the bills slowly fell onto the backs of the robbers killed by each other. The police inspector was already in the building and only one question worried her. What happened here? Jim put his hand on the officer's shoulder and modestly replied that he was already late for work and this aunt should sort it out herself. Satisfied with himself, the guy walked out of the bank with an easy gait. And how good he thought that he managed to save his last 200 yuan. The girl looked at Jim's back pocket and didn't understand where the guy got the 200 yuan from and thought that he might have stolen it. The police officer tried to shout after Jim to stand still. She continued that she was not an aunt, but a newly graduated student, but our hero was already far away. The next morning, Jim, as on any other day, went to the university. The teacher, Miss Gray, walked around the classroom and lectured all the students. When the teacher reached the end of the room, she couldn't help but notice how Jim was brazenly sleeping on his desk. Hearing a loud voice next to him, Jim raised his head and for several seconds could not understand what was happening. The stunning figure of Miss Gray appeared before the eyes of the protagonist. Jim very slowly raised his eyes from bottom to top and finally stopped. Miss Gray kindly asked Jim to concentrate on the lesson and continue to listen to her. The main character felt embarrassed by the situation and added that he was probably too tired yesterday after working part-time. Two guys sitting right behind Jim said that he should not have contradicted the teacher and would now receive a severe punishment. Suddenly, Miss Gray's thoughts returned to that terrible day yesterday. Remembering how it all happened, the teacher turned sharply and told Jim that she forgives him, but only this time. Returning back to the beginning of the office, Miss Gray accidentally rubbed herself against the corner of the table and tore her tights. Jim's eyes at that moment were directed only at this cut on the tights. The protagonist's angry classmates couldn't believe that the teacher forgave him so easily. One of the guys received a notification on his phone, Regional News, which said how one of the students outwitted bank robbers yesterday. A classmate couldn't believe his eyes. He saw Jim's photo on the news. At that same second, the bell rang for a break. The whole class already knew about this situation. A group of young students surrounded Jim. They tried to find out how the main character managed to deceive the criminals and how he did it. The girls put forward their versions of events. It would seem that their version was one better than the other, but the guy no longer heard them and simply agreed with them. A voice in the background shouted that it would be nice to celebrate. An envious classmate said that Jim was now a big star and he would have to treat everyone to dinner. The second classmate added that otherwise they would not be able to secure his status as a big star. Jim's classmates also didn't mind him inviting them all to dinner. But at some point, the main character was no longer in the class. Jim quietly left the office and indignantly said how dare they ask him to spend money. One of his classmates loudly shouted after the guy that he was a beggar and without ambitions, stars don't act like that when suddenly I felt someone's hand on my shoulder. Turning back, the classmate saw Jim, who returned with good news. The main character, with a smile on his face, told his classmate that he was inviting everyone to dinner. Jim stood in the middle of the class and shouted loudly that he was inviting everyone to the student cafeteria for dinner. One of the guy's classmates asked in disappointment about the canteen. All the kids in the class started laughing sharply. They couldn't believe that Jim would take them there for dinner but the main character was confident in his proposal to go there. Everyone was invited. 
The girls from the class were slightly shocked by this guy's choice, but did not lose hope of having a tasty meal. Jim's main envious man, Arthur, refused to have dinner with him in the dining room. The main character didn't care what they thought about him, unlike his classmate. The whole class left after the main character. Only a few students remained in the office, led by Arthur. One of the guys offered to go instead of the guy, thinking that Arthur was afraid of Jim. The young man was furious when he heard such words from his friend. Arthur told the guy to tell everyone at the university to gather near the cafeteria today because he had a plan to devour Jim. Anger and revenge could be seen in the guy's eyes. He was ready to trample the enemy. It was a bright and sunny day. All the students had already gathered near the dining room for a long time. Someone from the crowd said that he wouldn't believe how poor Jim could treat the whole group of people. One of the guys responded in astonishment that today not only the group would come to dinner, but the entire university. But few believed in Jim's success, because this was too difficult a task for a student with a reputation as a beggar. Masters of the craft, masters of the kitchen and all of China suddenly appeared through the crowd of people. Several guys managed to highlight the name of the restaurant where the chefs came from. This restaurant belonged to Arthur's family. The guy proudly walked into the center and shouted loudly that he was in a good mood and therefore would treat everyone to dinner. It was an army of professional chefs who were ready to cope with any task under the leadership of a leader. The guy's friends delighted everyone that if someone doesn't like the dining room, they can dine directly with the chef of the five-star restaurant, Arthur. The surprised crowd could not believe the eyes and skill of the chefs. The choice of place was already obvious. One of Arthur's comrades never ceased to admire him and constantly added that he was very generous and treated you with all his heart. The guy looked sarcastically in Jin's direction and added that, unlike some fools who pretend to be generous, but are actually beggars, Jim looked towards Arthur. He saw how joyful the guy became at the opportunity to publicly humiliate him. The girls from the class were confused. They did not know what to do or what to do. One of them said that she was already dying of hunger and was ready to go to the restaurant for a snack. But then she was ready to return and support Jim. But the main character was calm and kept the situation under control. He did not understand why spend so much money these days. The phone rang. It was Jim's people who had prepared him a delicious meal and were due to arrive any minute. Arthur looked at the main character and realized that the guy had no chance against his team of chefs. Victory was close. Unexpectedly for everyone, parcels and some huge containers appeared in the sky. The crowd of people could not understand what was inside there and why the containers were parachuting out of the sky. Suddenly, a cute blonde with two chefs in her hands landed together with the containers. Who would have thought but it was a team of chefs that Jim himself ordered for the evening dinner. The containers that came down from the sky turned out to be containers filled with completely fresh and nutritious foods. The crowd of people was inspired by the fact that Arthur took care that the students would not be full and decided to play it safe by calling for more food. One of Arthur's friends couldn't help but express his joy. He said that he shouldn't have kept silent about it and said it earlier. The guy didn't understand where these containers came from and who really ordered them. The resourceful protagonist shouted loudly to the crowd that Arthur was being registered today, and they better hurry up and line up if they want to try the best food in the world. The guy wondered for a long time. He thought that perhaps his younger brother had arranged all this, and after that it was time for him to get a promotion. Inspired by himself, Arthur shouted loudly that he just loves to make everyone happy, and money is not a problem for him. A beautiful blonde was walking towards the young man. The shy guy didn't have time to finish his welcome when suddenly... The girl walked past, responding with a strong slap in the face. Arthur couldn't believe his eyes, but these were Jim's men whom he had ordered. The main character met his people. The beautiful blonde in the center was Alice, the manager of the company. Joyful at the new meeting, Jim politely asked them to get to work. The guy asked, in addition to the main dishes to prepare several bowls of rice for him and pour cool drinking water into a bottle. Alice was surprised by the client's desire and immediately got to work. The huge crowd of people that gathered at the porch of the dining room could not believe that the main character had become the organizer of food from the air. Arthur's friends lost hope in their friend. They gathered to taste delicious food in the dining room. The young man looked like a kettle that had just boiled. He could not believe that Jim had turned against him. Arthur shouted to Jim that food from the air is nothing. The most important thing in cooking is the cook. 
The guy, pointing his hand at his chefs, said that they are the most famous all over the world. The young man shouted that one of them works in a five-star hotel and no one can compare with him. One of Arthur's cooks ran past him and loudly shouted the word master. The restaurant's chef asked the master to teach him the latest tricks. The formidable master looked at the cook and asked how he could ask him when he himself was one of the best chefs in the country. Arthur entered the dialogue between the cooks. He ordered to immediately return to the workplace and continue working, otherwise he would fire him but the cook was ready to be fired just to work together with the foreman. The main character interrupted the cooks and asked them to start dinner as he was hungry. Master Chief asked Jim for a couple more minutes and then would immediately get to work. Arthur did not believe what was happening. Events unfolded very quickly and clearly not in the young man's favor. The angry guy sharply attacked his comrade. He was convinced that he was a two-faced deceiver and felt a conspiracy behind his back. Arthur said that he saw him through and asked him not to contact him anymore. In the open window of the dining room was Jim, who could not wait for the culinary masterpieces from his culinary masters. The main character was sitting in the dining room when the first dish was brought to him. It was a salad. Surprised, Jim asked Alice why she didn't bring regular rice. The girl was in a stupor. She did not expect such a reaction from a guy to a molecular gastronomy dish. With a sharp movement of her hand, Alice removed the lid from the plate, revealing a green leaf floating in some kind of oil. Arthur stood in a crowd of girls and said with a smile on his face that this salad was in no way similar to the cabbage leaf on the plate. One girl who was in the dining room felt bad. Her legs gave way and leaning on Jim's shoulder, she said that this salad was great. The puzzled guy answered the girl that cabbage was delicious, but you shouldn't exaggerate. Alice approached Jim and asked him to look carefully at the so-called cabbage. On the plate was a cabbage-shaped salad that was made from truffles using molecular cooking technology. Jim picked up the chopsticks, took one bite, and said that it was really tasty, a little better than in the cafeteria. The crowd of people who watched Jim enjoy fine dining couldn't figure out how to call it anything better than a dining room. Alice said, Here are a few more dishes that cost a ton of money each bite and look like they were made in a cafeteria but have a unique taste. One by one, the cooks began to bring out dishes, free soup in the dining room without oil, prepared with boiled water and cabbage. The next dish on the plate was rare white asparagus with an endangered species of pork. At the end of the dinner, the chef brought out the signature dish, scrambled eggs with tomatoes and rice made from special tomatoes glazed with honey and spherical fish meat. Some of the guys began to praise Jim for dinner. They said that Arthur was just an illusion and the main character was really a dark horse and the dishes were much better. Walking quietly aside, Arthur could not believe that Jim was really a millionaire and he was not ready to lose. After Jim had enjoyed his meal, Alice approached him and asked him if he was happy with the meal. Jim burped and said the water was too cold. Alice smiled and answered the guy that it was the spring water of the snowy mountain. The girl wanted to return the remaining money back to Jim. The guy slammed his hand loudly on the table and shouted in surprise. Jim did not want Alice to return the money to him. He offered her to buy cosmetics or a handbag with the money. The crowd of people watching was shocked. In their eyes, Jim became more and more beautiful. Jim was glad that he had finally completed this difficult task and was able to fit all the food into his small stomach. Suddenly, a notification from the all-in system appeared before the guy's eyes. As a reward, Jim received organ enhancements at random. The lottery arrow twitched. The game began. The main character thought that he was ready to take anything but an improvement in his appendix. The arrow made a couple of circles and stopped. Jim was immobilized. Jim couldn't believe his luck. He had X-ray vision. A bunch of girls who surrounded the guy stood in absolutely nothing but their underwear. Alice looked at the guy and couldn't understand what was happening to him. At this moment, the main character was in seventh heaven. He thought that he no longer regrets his life. The next morning, at the threshold of the university, a police inspector tried to find Jim. Although the case was closed, thoughts after the robbery did not leave her for a second. At the entrance to the university, the inspector noticed several guys moving in her direction. The girl shouted at them to stop and help her find the guy. One guy from the crowd heard the girl's request and asked what he owed to his aunt, that is, to the officer. The girl angrily replied that she did not look like an old woman and her name was May. The guys looked at each other in confusion and smiled back at her. Officer May noticed the same bags that all university students were carrying. 
A couple of friends happily said that Jim started this fashion and after that the whole university began to imitate him. The police officer thought about the guy's words. She thought that perhaps this was a prank on the rich boy. Not far from May, Jim was among the crowd of girls. The girl was very surprised at how quickly she managed to find him. Jim stood among beautiful girls. The guy was worried about the all-in system. He completed his training and is now ready to move on to the next stage of choosing tasks. Persistent girls demanded attention from the boy and asked him to treat them with delicious food again. An all-in system appeared before Jim. Now, for failure to complete a task, the main character assigned himself a punishment. The higher the difficulty, the more severe it was. One of the girls told the guy that today she would be alone in the room. The officer heard the conversation. She couldn't believe how the guy got so much attention from the girls. After all, Jim did not look like a rich son. He was wearing ordinary pants, just a bag instead of a bag and a torn t-shirt. The guy carefully selected the task for the next stage of execution in the all-in system. The police officer concluded that thanks to the bank robbery, the guy became significantly rich. The girl turned to Jim and threateningly ordered him to stay where he was. Jim was so preoccupied with choosing the difficulty of the task that he did not hear the request from the police officer. The main character thought about the difficulty and decided to start with an easy level. The officer's hand touched Jim's shoulder sharply. The boy's finger jumped from the easy difficulty level to the difficult difficulty level. Jim didn't know what to do. It was as if the whole world had collapsed under him. The guy continued to hold his finger at the difficulty level, but as it turned out, it was the body of Officer May. The girl looked at Jim and ordered him to remove his paw from her. Returning to reality, the main character saw who was standing in front of him. Jim abruptly rushed in the other direction to hide from the policeman. After the guy ran, the police officer loudly shouted for Jim to immediately stand still. The all-in system showed a new task. It talked about purchasing a car worth two million, and in which it would be necessary to win a race. If the task was not completed, Jim lost his language skills. There wasn't much time left, and Jim decided that it was better to hurry to the car dealership. The satisfied guy headed towards the store with the thought that no one could stop him. Suddenly, Jim found himself in the air. The main character did not understand why he took off so sharply. A police officer caught up with the guy, and the fragile girl mercilessly threw him over her hip. Several combat techniques and Officer May was able to stop the criminal. The girl said that the young man was accused of hooliganism and resisting a police officer, and now he has been arrested in accordance with the law. There was pain and confusion in Jim's eyes. He understood that time was passing and the task had not yet been completed. Upon arrival at the police station, the officer conducted an interrogation. She asked the guy to tell the truth. But Jim insisted that it was all a misunderstanding. Several hours passed, but the inspector was still unable to find out the whole truth. A phone call rang in the policeman's pocket. The man on the other line asked to let the guy go. After some time, Miss Alice appeared. She introduced herself as Jim's lawyer. She said that the guy was released on bail and was ready to answer all questions herself. The free young man ran out of the police department and headed straight to the car dealership. When Jim ran to the store, it was already late. The salon was closed. Crossing the road, Jim wondered where he could find a car for two million. Suddenly, there was a loud signal from a bus that stopped right in front of the guy. A man was driving the bus. He shouted to the young man that he probably didn't care about his life. The driver could hit him. As if in the sky, a light bulb suddenly lit up above Jim's head. The satisfied guy thanked the bus driver and moved on. The man was surprised by the guy's answer, closed the door and drove forward. A powerful engine... A huge amount of horsepower, leather seats and air conditioning. Why not two million? Jim asked himself. The main character decided that it was definitely worth the money spent. Jim thought to himself that his language skills were now safe. The joyful young man was delighted because from that day on he had his own cool bus. The main character successfully completed the first part of the task. The second part of the task did not keep him waiting long. It said that next he needed to win a drift race. Jim thought that there was no talk of any kind of drift race. Moreover, the guy didn't even have the skills to drive a bus. The main character was in a panic. He didn't know what he could do. Suddenly, a voice in the background told Jim that he could help. It was Ennis. The young man was very happy and could no longer hide his emotions. The girl was glad that Jim took every opportunity to hug her. 
Taking control of the situation, Jim said in a serious voice to hurry up, otherwise you might be late. It was midnight. All the racers gathered on the road to discuss their cars and the future race. One of the participants in the race was Arthur. His car was as ready for racing as the others. One of the riders found out from the guy why no one was eating the dinner he had prepared for the people. The furious young man attacked his opponent and was ready to enter into a verbal altercation. The conversation between the two racers was interrupted by a gorgeous girl who told him to shut up immediately. The queen of racing stood in front of them. Every participant knew her snow-white car. The girl said to stop talking nonsense and sat down in the car. All participants were ready to start the race and find out which of them would deserve the main prize. There was a legend that the winner of the race would be able to take off the girl's mask and see her face. Today, Arthur planned to become this person. The guy made a final roll call of all the race participants to give the start. Suddenly, a bright flash illuminated all the racers at the start. The light was so bright that Arthur's eyes were blinded for a few seconds. Jim appeared from the bus window, greeted all the participants, and expressed a desire to take part in the race. The cars drove to the start line, cool supercars and new foreign cars, and among all these street engines there was a huge yellow bus. At that moment, Annis was driving, and for the first time in her life she was ashamed, having arrived at the race by bus. Arthur's anger knew no bounds. He shouted that it was Jim again. As he pulled a little closer to the starting line and drew level with the white car, Jim looked down. In the window of a nearby car, Jim saw a mysterious girl in a mask and bright purple hair. Thanks to the fact that the guy had the opportunity to look at the x-ray, it was not difficult for him to determine the girl's identity. The main character could not believe his eyes. He recognized this girl. She was an excellent student at his university. In front of him was the universal goddess of all the guys at the university, Mia. She had a gorgeous figure, family, and beautiful appearance. Mia prepared well for her tests and always passed her exams with flying colors. The girl loved to play various sports games, especially tennis. Her famous and sweet smile was able to melt the ice in the heart of the most insensitive guy. Jim was stuck for several minutes and could not believe that she was participating in the race. Outraged by being stared at for so long, Mia screamed, to which Jim stared. Jim did not expect such aggression from the girl. He could not think that a goddess could be so arrogant. And from second to second, they started the race. The roar of engines and the smell of burnt rubber could be heard on the road. Arthur couldn't understand how Jim was going to win the bus race. He shouted that he was finished and rushed forward. Driving past a snow-white car, the main character asked why it was standing still. The girl had an agreement with the judge. She had to give a head start of five minutes, otherwise he would say that the girl was mocking them. The guy offered to wait for her as he could not stop admiring her beauty. Mia did not understand the actions of the main character because the entry fee was about half a million. Jim said that the main thing is to be patient and calm. This half a million means nothing to him. The guy remembered that the system gives him all the money and he cannot spend it as he wants. The young man said that he had not lost yet, so he would see who would win. The girl couldn't understand how you could win a race on a bus without modifications. Before setting off, the guy shouted that he had a plan and he wouldn't just lose. Mia remembered who they've been talking about at the university lately. It's Jim. The race has received a new status and all participants have already covered a sufficient distance. Jim's bus drove slowly but confidently according to plan. The guy started the first and most important plan in this race. He picked up the phone and made a call to the landline number. They raised it on the other side, which meant that Jim's plan was working and he could continue. The guy shouted into the phone that a crowd of racers had gathered on the mountain and it was necessary to urgently call the police. When Arthur took the lead in his car, he was glad that Jim was well behind him. He dreamed of winning the race and showing everyone who the real racer is. Suddenly, in the distance, Arthur saw something strange spread out on the road. It sparkled brightly and seemed sharp. The guy immediately pressed the brake pedal to the floor. The guy's instincts were correct. There was a strip of spikes on the road. Several police officers shined a flashlight directly into his glass. Arthur was arrested by a police officer for illegal modification of a vehicle and gambling, the frightened guy obeyed the officer and followed her with his hands tied. The police officer was grateful to the stranger who called and warned about illegal racing. Jim's bus slowly but surely moved towards the finish line. Alice wanted to ask the guy if there was another way. 
Then the main character shared his plan. He called the police to block the shortcut. Thanks to this, now their bus has a chance to win the race. The girl scaredly asked the young man how they could get around the police checkpoint. Jim, with a bored expression on his face, answered Anise that when the time comes, she will understand everything. At this time, the police officer scolded all illegal riders and talked about the system of fines for this violation. Jim's bus was rapidly moving towards the police officer. At some point, the transport failed to maneuver and accidentally touched the officer's figure. The surprised girl shouted about who dared to do this. When the window went down, the police officer saw Jim's satisfied face. The girl furiously asked Jim if he was also racing. The main character turned on the fool and asked in surprise who would participate in the bus race. Jim asked the officer to clear the road and showed the bus number. It was the last regular bus heading to his house. The girl thought about it because you really can't take part in the race by bus. The road was cleared for Jim and they rushed forward sharply. The girl was very surprised because there are no buses on this mountain. Finally, the officer said that Jim would still pay for her uniform. Half the road has been covered and Jim's bus is already in the lead, Enos said. A couple of seconds after these words, several riders instantly caught up with them. Looking at Jim, Mia said that she couldn't believe that their bus was the first. The girl said in surprise that Jim had really called the police. Mia shouted that it was too smart a move on his part and that she could not be beaten on the city track. The guy's partner looked ahead. They were far from the first. Jim took the phone in his hand and told them to act according to his plan. It's no longer such a rare phrase from Jim that money was not a problem that gave him coolness and confidence. The race continued and several cars remained in the top three. One of the racers was glad someone called the police, but he had another way to win. A new modification with nitrogen acceleration was built into his car. With this feature, the racer could easily outrun the snowstorm car. After pressing the button, the car seemed to rush forward with such speed that there was practically no traction between the wheels and the asphalt. The guy was easily able to overtake all the participants in the race and become the leader. The racer was confidently racing towards the finish when a bright light suddenly came on above him. The light was so bright that all participants were forced to stop the race. A voice was heard from the sky asking the earthlings to study their bodies. One of the riders thought they were aliens. The guy was scared to death. He didn't want to leave so early. All the race participants got out of the cars and started crying loudly. They asked the aliens to spare them and let them go. Jim's bus pulled up to the racers and stopped right in front of them. The side window rolled down and Jim said that he was not an alien, but just a rich guy. The entire street was illuminated by a blindingly bright light, which was located at the very top of each building. The main character told Alice to deal with them. The girl took a special tube filled with sleeping pills and began to aim intently at the racers. Each dart was absolutely aimed at the necks of the young boys. A few seconds later, a bunch of racers were already flying in their dreams. Joyful Jim waved his hand at them and said that they should sleep like in the story about the tortoise and the hare. The guy thanked his partner for the excellent job. The girl was happy when she heard the compliment because she learned this from the detective. Jim took the lead again, and now it was his car that was in the lead. Mia's snow-white car drove right behind him and watched as the guy deftly dealt with other racers. The girl said that Jim really had a couple of aces up his sleeve and it was time to speed up. At the rear of the car, there is a spoiler and two large exhaust pipes. They will significantly give it power. Mia hit the nitrous boost pedal. She couldn't let Jim win the race. There were still three kilometers left. The guy wanted not only to win the race and have time to watch the broadcast, Jim was bored because at that time there was no worthy opponent for him. Suddenly there was a loud engine noise. Jim looked out the window and saw Mia's car flying above him. The rival's views crossed at one point. No one wanted to lose. Jim was surprised. He couldn't believe that after so many tests, the girl was able to catch up with him. The Snow White car quickly overtook the bus and drove on. Confused, Alice asked Jim what they should do. The young man was puzzled because such an outcome of events was not in his plans. The main character picked up the walkie-talkie and asked his partner to throw it at her car. Alice looked at Jim with a smile and told them to just watch. The girl tore her pants to quickly make a small bandage. Spinning the radio above her head, Alice began aiming at Mia's car. It was the most accurate throw in the girl's career. The radio hit right where it was needed. Mia was surprised by the appearance of the walkie-talkie. A voice from the walkie-talkie asked if the beauty was tired and why not stop and take a break. 
The girl reacted menacingly to Jim's words and said not to play games with her because he is a loser and only deserves to lick his feet. The guy replied that he would still have time to do it, but not before he won the race. Surprised by the answer, the girl called Jim a pervert and added that he could not win. The main character called his rival the queen of the race and asked if she was confident in her victory. Or, correctly speaking, Mia, having revealed all his cards, Jim put an end to the dialogue. Despite the fact that the girl was wearing a mask, she could not believe how the guy found out who she really was. The main character not only knew who was under the mask, but also what color of underwear the girl was currently wearing. Jim said it was great to keep his secrets, but he wouldn't mind a gesture of goodwill. After these words, Mia suddenly braked just a few meters before the finish line. This was the first race in which a bus driver took first place. Splashes of champagne flowed like a river. Handsome Jim stood right on the pedestal. Among the crowd of roaring fans was Mia. If the guy tells anyone about this, he's dead. Amid the noise of celebrations, the main character quietly disappeared to watch the long-awaited broadcast. It was a live broadcast from the guy's favorite streamer. Inspired by the girl's dancing, Jim could not take his eyes off the figure. At one point, the main character became interested in who was under the mask. Taking the phone in his hands, Jim began to closely monitor the girl. The number of viewers on the broadcast was not so many. The comments were both good and condemning. The cute cat was bored alone, and he jumped on his owner. The streamer fell right in front of the audience with numerous cuts and abrasions. A flurry of negativity and emotions fell on the poor girl. The girl felt ashamed of the situation and asked for an apology from her subscribers. Jim was furious with the situation and did not understand how people could talk about his goddess like that. With every second, the number of viewers on the broadcast was getting smaller and smaller. At one point, only Jim was left there. The guy said that if he had money, the goddess would already be in the tops. A small flash of light appeared on the main character's right hand. Jim thought about what this could mean as he raised his right hand up. The guy saw the inscription on the phone screen. His favorite streamer received the award for Queen of Broadcasts. The main character Envy asked who could do this, give his goddess such a title and a lot of money. At one point, the number of viewers on the broadcast exceeded two million. The young streamer's joy knew no bounds. She thanked Jim Jim 95 for such a generous gift. The main character remembered that he had exactly the same nickname as the girl named him. Jim received a notification on his phone thanking him for the support of his favorite streamers. Now the main character was in first place in the top gifts of the day among all streamers. But how could this happen? Jim remembered that he had not yet looked at the reward for winning the race. The reward is a gift generator, Jim saw in the system. The main character received a golden finger as a reward. Jim looked at the conditions in frustration. He had one attempt for an unlimited amount of virtual currency, which had already been spent. The next morning of the protagonist began at the university. Jim, as always, wanted to sleep and therefore yawned at every step. The guy entered the class and was surprised. In front of him stood a long-legged beauty with a bandage on her left leg. Jim wondered in surprise that this was really the goddess of the stream. The main character looked at the girl in surprise. Jim was upset because now he has absolutely no chance to approach her. The main character listed that they were not suitable for their height or face. So why waste time? The girl turned towards Jim and said, Finally, he is here. The boy replied that they did not know each other enough to wait for each other. The girl's thoughts about how the guy could do this, reveal her, haunted her. In the center of the office, the main character saw a bright light that made its way through the heads of his classmates. The guy loudly asked who this light was coming from. Everyone made way for him, and he saw the guy's shiny head. A guy with a shaved head, it was Rich Arthur. He saw Jim and thought why he was so lucky because wherever he was, the main character was always nearby. Arthur decided that it was Jim who called the police and shouted loudly in his direction. The main character looked at the bald, angry guy and replied that he had been with Mia all night. All classmates froze and at the same moment looked at the university beauty. Mia was confused in her answer. It was difficult for her to admit this fact. The girl was furious. Thoughts in her head screamed to kill Jim. All the guys in the class were shocked by what they heard, and only a happy Jim at the end of the class quietly hummed a melody. Classmates quickly began discussing the new couple in class. Mia stood quietly on the sidelines. She could not say anything in response and was waiting for revenge. The teacher came into the class and asked all the students to take their seats. 
The class teacher stood on her toes and began to write the topic of the lesson. Jim couldn't believe his eyes. He noticed how the teacher's white shirt had cat fur on it. There was a cut on her leg exactly the same as the girl had recently on the stream. Jim tried to make a comparison of their faces in his head. The guy couldn't believe it, but it was his class teacher, Miss Gray, who was the girl from the stream. The teacher asked Jim what was happening to him and why he was constantly looking at her. It was a real surprise for the guy. The gorgeous goddess from the phone suddenly appeared opposite him. The main character was happy because now he knows what his teacher does in the evenings. Suddenly, Jim heard a sound. It was the sound of an incoming notification from the system. The main character received a new task. This time, the difficulty mode was hellish. The task asked the guy to collect three streamers on the internet within one week. Jim did not understand the task because what it meant to collect and why the inscription with the reward for completion was distorted. In any case, the guy was ready to immediately begin the task. First of all, Jim decided to test his teacher with his X-ray vision. The guy argued that he was doing this only from the point of view of the task, and not for pleasure, there should be a mole on his thigh, which meant that in front of him was a streamer. Having turned on his vision, the main character found himself in a stupor. The teacher's entire figure was exactly as he had intended. But everything didn't work out as Jim planned, because the eyes were only able to show through one layer. It's not fair. The teacher asked the main character what he was looking at like that as he was staring straight at the girl's figure. Jim masterfully turned on the fool and did not understand what she was talking about. The teacher's phone rang, bringing it closer. She saw a familiar contact. The girl had a look of fear in her eyes from the call. She asked the students to continue studying the topic on their own. Jim saw that the teacher was in distress and she quickly ran away from the office. The main character remembered that when the audience insulted the streamer on air, she cried just like Jim's teacher. The guy persistently advanced to the office door. He did not care about money or the mission. There was only one task to protect his beloved goddess. At this time, at the threshold of the university, the girl was in a hurry getting on her scooter. A man was already watching her from around the corner of the building. A guy with a pink haircut and the same shirt said on the phone that the girl had left and they should press her again. Jim noticed the guy. Was he really trying to hit on his goddess? Upon arrival at the hospital, the girl ran into the office of the head doctor. She asked if he could help with the operation for her father. The doctor regretfully refused to help. He reminded the girl that the money that had been allocated had already been spent on previous operations for her father. Jim's teacher began to sob loudly in horror. A notification came to the phone. The girl was offered dinner with a gentleman for half a million. Leaving the office and reading the message, she did not know what she could do. At the exit from the hospital, several men dressed in gangster clothes were waiting for the girl. One man put pressure on the girl, saying that it was time to end this. The second guy said that before signing the contract, he did not think that the girl would be so stubborn. The man touched the girl's beautiful face with his hands and said that he was sorry that she was so beautiful. After these words, his face was met with a powerful blow from a fist. The man fell to the ground. The girl turned around and was surprised by her intercessor. Jim came running to her aid. He called this gang a bunch of shit. The main character confidently took the girl by the hand and shouted that this was his girlfriend. From what she heard, the teacher did not know what to say. She simply said his name. One of the villains shouted that the girl had a contract with the company. The man said that she did not read the terms carefully, and now it is her problem. Continuing his remark about violating the terms of the contract, the villain received a powerful slap in the face. Jim asked him to be quiet and not say another word. The first man slowly managed to get up from Jim's crushing blow. The guy knocked out several of the villain's teeth and they will no longer be useful to him. The man took out a knife and shouted loudly for the main character to be killed. The second man also took out a knife and was ready to attack. Both villains unanimously said that no matter how hard a fist hits, it will never be stronger than a knife. Jim pointed his finger and shouted that it seemed the villains had misunderstood everything and asked to turn around. One of the villains turned back and shouted that it was an ambush. Turning back, there was absolute emptiness and no one was expecting them. Taking advantage of the deception and the situation, Jim picked up the goddess and rushed away from the villains. Not far from the main road stood a yellow bus, already familiar to the guy. The bandits followed Jim. They tried to find the boy and punish him. 
A satisfied and calm young man was sitting on a bus seat, and a surprised girl was sitting on his lap with him. The guy whistled and immediately said that it looked like they didn't know whose bus they dared to get on. One of the villains no longer believed Jim, and especially since this was the main character's bus. At that moment, Enos appeared from behind with a powerful blow from her knee straight to the jaw. She easily dealt with the first bandit and easily dealt with the second. A bunch of bandits were left to rest at the bus stop and wait for the next bus. Having dusted off her hands, Annis continued to go about her business as if nothing had happened. Jim shouted to the two clowns that no one should dare enter his bus and ask them to give it gas. The barely alive bandits were left lying on the asphalt, but the main character continued his journey on the bus. Jim's teacher whispered his name quietly. The guy tried to find out what happened and what was going on. The girl asked the boy to let her go. Jim immediately released his goddess. The guy was infinitely glad that he got to spend at least a little time with his favorite streamer. The girl with sadness in her eyes asked to be let off the bus. She took a piece of paper with a pen to sign the terms of the contract. The girl did not have the funds to pay for breaking the contract. The teacher decided to go ask for an apology, but Jim replied that he would not let her out since she was already his person. The main character heard a sound from a notification. This could mean that Jim had collected one of the three streamers. The guy was happy because now he can complete the task separately. The teacher screamed at Jim to stop calling her a loved one. The main character could not hide the joy on his face and hugged the girl tightly, saying that not now but soon. The girl pushed Jim aside and asked him not to forget that in front of him was still his teacher. The main character smiled joyfully and said that the bus had arrived at the girl's stop. The surprised woman got off the bus and could not say anything in response. When the bus doors closed, the girl couldn't believe that Jim liked her so much. She understood that this romance could not continue since she was a teacher and he was a student. Jim's bus drove into the territory of an abandoned factory near the city. The main character decisively asked Enos when they would arrive at the place. The girl replied that they were already there and whether they needed to call more people. Jim asked if everything was ready for the plan. He looked at the floor, tapped the safe with his hand and replied that everything was ready. The guy confidently walked out of the open doors of the bus, saying that even with this pistol he was not afraid of anyone. Jim walked past a group of bandits and suspicious-looking men. Outraged by the guy's impudence, a crowd of people asked if he was lost and maybe he needed problems. Jim silently walked past the men and entered the hangar building. In a huge and empty building at the end, there was a large chair. The main character shouted loudly that he did not have much time and was in a hurry to watch the broadcast. The gang boss, surprised by the brat's impudence, turned and asked if it was he who kidnapped the broadcast goddess. The man added that kidnapping is a crime and that Jim now has big problems. The main character replied that everything was correct and he agreed with his statement. The gang boss angrily shouted back that how could Jim not kidnap the girl? The main character stood in confusion. The man asked the guy again in surprise if he really admitted this and that all this did not go according to his script. Jim put his hand into his jacket and was about to take something out of the inside pocket. All the bandits in the building shouted that the kid had a gun and they needed to be careful. The main character took out a funny pink key with Peppa Pig's face on the end. The bandits did not expect such an outcome of events and therefore simply stood still. The guy carefully inserted the key into the safe and turned the key sharply. One of the bandits shouted that this time he definitely had a gun. Suddenly, Ennis came running to Jim's aid and scattered all the bandits in all directions. The guy rushed to the main boss and asked if he wanted to know the price, since he so wanted to get Jim's girl. The main character aimed his gun at the head of the gang leader. With the words, take the shot, the guy began to pull the trigger of the pistol. All the gang members stood nearby and understood that nothing could be done and there was no way to change anything. The gang leader looked into the eyes of the main character and wondered why this guy was more reckless than him. The guy was unshakable and finished the job he started and pulled the trigger of the gun. The satisfied boss rejoiced and screamed like a little child and repeated over and over again that there really is money everywhere in heaven. In fact, Jim had a special pistol with unlimited clips of money. The main character opened his arms to his sides and shouted towards the boss to stop dreaming because the main god was standing in front of him. Jim told his boss that each bullet was payment for the streamer's contract, and from now on it no longer belonged to them. The man did not agree with the protagonist's proposal and tried to interrupt Jim. 
The guy threw the gun aside and said that his sentence was over. When Jim reached into the safe, the gang leader shouted that this money was not enough for him. The guy, outraged by these words, pointed the second pistol towards the gang leader and said that he should take two. The banknotes from two pistols almost broke the leader's head. The shots were so powerful that the boss barely remained on his feet. Jim asked the man in surprise that this was still not enough. Jim took a third pistol from the safe and pointed another additional clip of money directly towards the bandits. These were the happiest moments. The bad guys couldn't believe the young man's generosity and it was like they were swimming in a pool of money. Jim still managed to get the long-awaited contract of his stream goddess. Leaving the hangar full of money, the guy shouted for them to remember once and for all who this girl's boyfriend is. On the way back on the bus, a dialogue began between Jim and Anise. Is it really worth spending so much money on a teacher? The girl asked, and immediately added that it was none of her business. The guy replied that this contract was definitely worth the money donated. Jim added that he had no reason to give so much money to people who bullied his teacher. Meanwhile, in the gangster hangar, there was anger and shouting. A smart young man left a whole gang of dangerous criminals in the cold. It turns out that Jim did not use a money clip with real bills at all. They were ordinary fakes. One of the bandits shouted that he had found several real banknotes. Pleased with his find, he proudly told his boss that he had as many as 250 in his hand. The boss was angry with the situation and hit his partner with such force that the poor fellow flew into the wall. He could not take this garbage. Someone put a gun to the back of the boss's head, and they told him that this time the gun was real. Turning back, the boss realized who was standing behind him. He immediately fell at the feet of the mistress. The man wanted to apologize to her, but the girl's long leg quickly covered his mouth before he even had time to finish. In front of him was a tall girl with gorgeous hair. She smiled sweetly and offered to choose a bullet in the forehead instead of an apology. The next day, someone sent a whole box with a secret package to the teacher's office. Miss Gray enthusiastically said that she had not ordered anything recently, and perhaps there was some kind of mistake. Opening the box in the center, she saw many small and torn pieces of paper. The girl was confused and couldn't believe her eyes. Her breathing froze for a second, her heartbeat quickened. It was a contract with an agency that was completely torn into small pieces. Under all the papers, Miss Gray saw a letter. It was a talent search contract for the Jim Jim agency. Not far from the university, Jim's partner was closely watching the girl. Jim sat under a tree and calmly waited for Enos to finish observing and talk about what he saw. The guy asked the girl how things were going there and whether Miss Gray had signed his contract. Anise jumped from the tree and approached Jim and replied that the girl could not refuse such a generous offer. Her father needed money for an operation. The popularity of the goddess of the ethers began to rapidly gain momentum after the last gift from the guy, and attention to this personality began to grow steadily. Jim remembered that the system would not provide gifts for all three streamers, but for the top two stars, perhaps something should work out. The main character opened a website with streamers, and in the first place he found the name of the most popular star in recent times. The guy opened the broadcast, which was watched by just over 14 million people. It was Little Chris. Jim went straight to his yellow bus. Now he should find a way to negotiate, and for what amount she will sign his contract. Arriving at the streamer's office, she didn't have to wait long for an answer. Little Chris quickly agreed to Jim's proposal. The guy was shocked. The girl had absolutely no intention of bargaining with him and was ready to accept the first offer. Little Chris was not so simple. She smiled sweetly at Jim and at the same time said that when she saw the cute guy, she thought that he was a good person and would not lie. The main character was flattered by the little girl's words and thought that this beauty would have a great future. Jim thought that everything had turned out easy. Victory was just around the corner. Little Chris thought angrily to herself that little Jim had brought the wolf into the house because very soon he would be in her hands. The girl raised a glass of the rich and sweet drink and asked him to drink it for Jim. At that moment, the main character did not suspect anything and gladly accepted the offer from the girl, saying, let's drink. The guy drank the drink to the bottom. Little Chris glanced at the servant who was standing right behind her. This signal meant going according to plan. The elderly man slowly walked towards Jim's bus. Anise was not far from the transport and felt something not good. The man entered the doors of the bus, climbed into the passenger compartment. He looked around intently and was ready to take something out of his pocket. 
A thin needle with sleeping pills flew straight into the elderly man's neck. It was a dart aimed from Ennis's tube. She saw right through him and shouted that first he needed to go through her. The man was not frightened by this outcome. He slowly removed the needle from his neck and turned to the girl. Anis was surprised why sleeping pills did not work on humans. The man began to unbutton his shirt. He replied that this remedy did not affect him, and his body had developed immunity. Having completely taken off his shirt, he shouted that now she had met old man Morty, and now Enos was learning the unique martial arts of China. The girl tried to be the first to start the battle, but the result was not long in coming. The man had too flexible a body and great dodging skills. After several series of deflected blows, Morty showed what he was capable of and demonstrated a square dance. The blow was so strong and accurate that Annis lost consciousness for a second. Technique after technique, blow after blow, the girl tried to crush all her strength to defeat the old man. But the man's martial arts were so dynamic and dexterous that Ennis could not keep up with his rhythm. With a sharp blow from the side of his palm, old man Morty easily defeated the young girl in the fight. The fight was so boring that at the end, for fun, the man took out his phone and took a photo with Anise. At this time, the dinner between Jim and baby Chris continued. The best seafood dishes were on the table. The nice couple communicated very friendly. Everyone was happy with the situation and how it developed. Under the little girl's skirt, there was a special powder that would make anyone who tried it immediately fall asleep. Jim drank his glass of wine to the bottom and collapsed with his whole body on the table and fell asleep. The joyful girl jumped up on the table and shouted that she would never sign a contract with the main character. Little Chris finished her red wine. She wanted to throw Jim back on the bus and plant evidence. The girl laughed loudly and with a joyful smile on her face told the sleepy guy that now he could only drink with his cellmates. Suddenly someone muttered that he didn't like to drink and had never drunk alcohol. Turning her gaze in the other direction, the little girl saw Jim, who was sitting at the table and looking at the girl's further actions. The young guy was very embarrassed to tell how he managed to avoid the girl's insidious plan and avoid this. Jim told how he used x-ray vision as soon as he entered the room and reproached the girl for the fact that the powder could have been hidden better. The main character really liked this wonderful sight, and most likely now he will have to get used to looking at beautiful girls. Indignant Chris shouted that nothing would work out, and sooner or later Jim would end up in her hands. The main character stood in his signature stance and said that the girl should think about who drank the powder in the end. Little Chris sat down at a chic pink chair and continued to look at Jim in surprise. Next to her stood an empty glass of drunk wine. All that the girl had time to say was that Jim was a disgusting and bad person. After this phrase, the little girl no longer understood much. The guy said that he forgot to do something and headed towards Chris. The girl replied that all Jim's actions were illegal and he would not be able to do this. Jim asked the girl what violations of the law she was talking about because there was nothing illegal in his actions. The guy took out a small transparent bag and began to collect seafood from the table. Having tied up the bag full of food, Jim finally answered Chris that the girl had no idea how to invite someone to dinner. Little Chris was shocked by Jim's actions. She is a great beauty who is impossible to resist just like a guy can think about leftover food. The main character turned around and asked the girl what was the matter and why she considered herself more important than food. Little Chris was furious when she heard Jim's words. With sharp swings of her arms and legs, the girl threw several plates of food onto the floor. Jim was furious at such negligence on Chris's part. The guy walked up to her and looked at her angrily. The main character could not forgive the girl's behavior. He took her hand and placed it on his lap. The guy suddenly raised his hand and gave several slaps with all his might. The girl screamed that the guy was disgusting, but Jim did not stop because handling food and breaking dishes this way was unacceptable in his family. With tears in her eyes, little Chris said that even her father did not allow him to lay a hand on her. After Jim spanked Chris, he walked happily towards the bus with bags full of food and drinks. Before leaving the building, at the exit, the guy met old man Morty, who was returning back from the bus. Coming closer to his mistress, the old man asked what happened and why she could not stand on her feet. The girl could not answer the real truth to the old man in response. She asked how everything went on his part. Old man Morty nodded confidently and replied that Jim would soon face an unfortunate fate. When the guy got on the bus, Enos was already waiting for him.
The main character was surprised how good she looked and why he hadn't paid attention to it before. Any minute now, the bus was about to start moving when a loud sound of flashing lights and cars blocked the road. One of the policemen shouted loudly that Jim, based on a report from interested people, was suspected of hiding a bunch of stolen money. Jim opened the bus doors and asked the officer in surprise what kind of stolen money he was talking about. At that same second, Annis pulled the guy by the hand and put a gun in him right in front of the policeman. The police officer shouted loudly that the suspect had a gun and needed to be detained immediately. Voices from the megaphone shouted for them to start shooting at the guy now. Jim didn't understand what was happening. He had never held a real gun in his hands before. The smug police officer shouted for his officers to immediately open fire on Jim. One of the policemen was unable to shoot, and the enraged officer did not understand why they did not listen to his order. Suddenly, Officer May appeared in front of Jim, blocking the path with her body. The girl asked the officer to look carefully at the guy because he had a water pistol in his hands. Jim raised the gun and pulled the trigger. A small stream of water flew out of the barrel of the gun. The policeman shouted back that Jim was resisting the police and that he should be detained. The girl asked the officer to look around. The main character could not escape, since cars blocked all directions of the road. The police officer asked May why she was helping the guy, because when she was investigating the guy, she had a grudge against him. The girl persistently answered the officer that she had no personal enmity and relied only on justice. May believed that bad guys should not be allowed to get away, but good guys should be caught. Suddenly, Jim hugged Officer May from behind and said that he was incredibly touched because the girl called him a good guy. The girl answered the main character not to touch her because he was still a suspect in the case, and the police did not need to shoot him. The police chief pushed the girl aside and walked straight towards Jim. The main character was furious. He asked the officer why he allowed the girl to be treated this way. The man looked at Jim and asked if he was still thinking about help, if someone else would support him. The main character asked the officer not to talk too much. He looked into the alley of a dark building and loudly shouted to get out. Opposite the police chief, a powerful drone jumped out with an action camera below. The man was furious, because all this time he was being filmed by the camera, he mercilessly grabbed the drone with his hand. The chief of police threw the drone straight to the ground with such force that the equipment scattered to the sides into small pieces. The main character told the boss that he knew that the top two streamers were actresses under his banner. The man stood in anger. He destroyed the camera and was glad that now no one would see him. Jim, confused, answered the boss. Did he really not know about such a thing as broadcasting and live broadcasting? The man pointed the gun towards Jim and answered him that he really thought he could do whatever he wanted with the money. Unexpectedly for the boss, someone started touching his gun. These were fans of streamers who gathered to see their idols live. A crowd of women and men surrounded the policemen. They saw all the actions live and could not believe that all this was happening for real and everything looked so realistic. The main character again emerged victorious from the situation, because with money you can do whatever you want. In the building where little Chris was, the effects of the medicine finally wore off and she came to her senses again. The girl asked old man Morty if everything was ready because Jim shouldn't laugh at the moment. The old man reassured the girl by saying that with him on the team, she would not have any problems. The girl wanted to call Jim and warn him that he was in big trouble after he contacted her. Little Chris was terrified because she couldn't find her phone in her pocket. The girl's screams could be heard far outside the house because the guy swapped the phone for the streamer's phone. At that moment, all three streamers' phones were broadcasting live from the scene where the police were trying to detain Jim. Jim stood among a crowd of screaming people and realized that their strength was truly great. Now the main character can confidently sign a contract with little Chris. Jim completed one more system task and now there is only one last streamer left. Jim excitedly asked the crowd how they enjoyed the outdoor live stream. The main character took advantage of the moment and was able to advertise his stream with little Chris. He asked to follow his broadcast, because tomorrow there will be a big prize draw. The audience was delighted with Jim's speech, but there were still not enough subscribers to the broadcast. Suddenly, the sounds of pistol shots were heard. The entire crowd was terrified and screamed for help. The police chief turned to Jim and said that he was not going to shoot him, but would now search his bus. The main character was pleased with this turn of events because it was an excellent opportunity to act. 
Jim turned to the boss in fear. He asked not to search his bus because so many people were watching the broadcast. The man looked in Jim's direction and warned him that he would be in trouble if the guy insulted Chris's highness. The boss threw away the phone and ordered all police officers to search Jim's bus. The main character thanked the officer and obediently awaited developments. The police chief was alarmed by the guy's sudden change in facial expression. The man said that it was too late and did he want to say something to justify it. Jim told the police chief that the broken phone that was broadcasting from it would only make people more aware of what was happening here. All the people who were behind the main character were part of his live broadcast. The man did not believe in Jim's success because he knew that he was about to be caught. One of the police officers looked out of the bus window and showed a black suspicious suitcase that had been reported missing. Joyful at this discovery, the man ordered the suitcase to be opened immediately. The chief of police understood that Jim could no longer avoid the story of the suitcase planted by his people. One police officer, on the orders of the chief, opened the suitcase and saw a bright light. All the police officers, like the chief himself, were waiting before handing Jim evidence of a stolen suitcase full of money. The satisfied police chief turned to Jim and asked him what he could do about it now that the evidence was indisputable. The main character repented to the police and said that he should not have loved studying so much. The man was confused. He did not understand why Jim was saying to study and what he should study. The suitcase, which was opened by the police, contained books and textbooks from the university where Jim studied. The police chief was furious and did not understand where all the stolen money went. The main character looked towards the police chief and asked what kind of stolen money they were talking about because he didn't know anything. The man pointed at the bus and told Jim that he hid all the loot because his employee had just found the money. The main character answered the police chief that apparently he forced the employee to throw money on the bus for him. The man pointed a gun at Jim and warned him that if he wanted to discredit the police, it was a crime. The main character took the gun in his hand and ordered to lower it, because otherwise the chief of police would not get off with just prison. The police chief could not expect such impudence from the guy and he told him that no one could stop him. The boy smiled back at the police officer and added that before no one could stand up for him, but now he is here. The police chief could not believe his eyes because in front of him stood a man to whom he could not do anything. The man asked the police chief if he could stop him. It was the director of the police department from the disciplinary bureau. The man contacted the police chief and told him that they had received an internal report, which found that he had committed numerous disciplinary violations that entailed a lot of responsibility. The bureau director's staff moved forward. Now they will investigate and judge the police chief according to the law. They cannot tolerate crime in the department. Surprised by the situation, the police chief turned to his colleagues and said that he really didn't know where all the stolen money had gone because it had just been in a suitcase. The man looked towards Jim, who was basking in the joy of the fans, and asked if he had asked to appear at the district attorney's office. Next to the man in a formal suit stood the young officer May, who asked to help her with this. The man told the girl that this situation doesn't look right, but if Jim is a guy who has a heart of gold and a good head, then he is ready to help. The girl blushed at the man's words. Jim was not her boyfriend because he was only her suspect. The man turned to the girl again. He said that he would return later to organize an investigation and ask the officer not to talk nonsense on the street and to remember this. Officer May turned back. This man of few words was her dad. Jim stood aside. The system can really make money appear or disappear anywhere. This money will go directly to increasing the popularity of him and the streamer. As it turned out, the system included not only girls, but also guys as streamers, so Jim successfully completed the task. The guy was looking forward to the well-deserved reward for completing this task. He couldn't wait for the reward. Would it really be an improvement in X-ray vision with a full body scan? The reward did not have to wait long. Jim received several rewards. One of them was the opening of the main quest line, and the other was a personal vault. In one of the skyscraper buildings in the city center, the silhouette of one man said on the phone that he had a feeling of danger. The next day, Jim sat silently in his chair and thought about the main task, which was to create a company, expand the staff, confirm the location of the office, and complete the first transaction. The main character thought that he already had a company and had two employees. All that was left was to find an office and carry out one transaction. 
Jim laughed out loud. He felt that he was about to become the richest man in the world. A bottle of carbonated drink fell sharply onto the table and stopped Jim's laughter. Opposite the main character stood a man who had been waiting for several minutes for his drink to be sold at the checkout. The main character looked at the buyer for several seconds, and the buyer in turn looked at the seller. The boy apologized to the buyer with great regret and began to complete the purchase. Jim's thoughts at this moment were about why, after completing so many tasks, he had to work part-time in a store to earn a living. There was a sound of falling not far from the cash register. It was a red-haired girl who spilled milk on the floor, slipped and fell right on several bottles. The store manager suddenly appeared from the door. He shouted to the girl why she was messing around again. Didn't she really need a part-time job? The girl, with tears on her face, told the manager to forgive her. The man turned to the girl and asked what he should do with her now. The girl was in despair. She cried loudly, and she asked the manager to forgive her. She was ready to pay for all the damaged goods just so that she would not be fired from her job. The man looked at her angrily and replied that half of the salary for the current month would be deducted. He asked the girl to proceed to his office and that he needed to talk about something else with the store employee. Jim looked towards the manager and the girl and was outraged at this situation. The store manager looked towards the guy and shouted loudly at what he was staring at because for such a speed of work he would cut his salary in half. The door to the service room slammed shut and Jim was left alone in the store, sitting at his cash register. Later the girl came up to Jim and with tears in her eyes asked him to forgive her because the guy had also been hurt by the store manager. The guy quietly patted the girl on the head and said in a calm voice that nothing bad had happened. They were two poor students, and they should help each other. The girl was incredibly happy with Jim's words. She asked him to wait before she went to the manager's office and suggested that the guy go somewhere for dinner because she had coupons for discounted food. The young man looked at his colleague from the store and definitely realized that this was a little angel girl who was ready to share the last. A store employee came to the manager's office. She asked what he wanted from her and asked not to fire her, because from now on she would do everything right. The man walked towards the girl, saying that it all depended on how well she knew what she was doing, and was ready to grab her hand. Suddenly, Jim's fingers on his hand suddenly made a click. At the same moment, a large cash register appeared above the head of the store manager, which with all its weight fell directly on his head. The man asked Jim if he really wanted to be fired. The main character, with a malicious smile on his face, answered the manager that he was not afraid of being fired in this store. The man showed Jim the door and shouted that from now on he was fired and he could get out of here. Jim asked in surprise why he was fired, because the manager clearly thought something wrong about this situation. The boy replied that from now on it was he who was fired and now the whole store belongs to Jim. Outraged by the words of the main character, the manager could not believe what the guy said because he did not have the money to buy this store. Jim told the manager that if he didn't believe it, he could just call and ask if it was all true. The manager left to make a call to the auctioneer, while Jim happily stood next to the girl and waited for the end of the conversation. The main character went into the office of the general manager and asked him if he wanted to say anything. At one point, an alarm clock flew towards the guy with all its force, which immediately crashed against the wall. The man shouted at Jim that he was a liar because he had called all the shareholders and they confirmed that the store was not for sale. The boy laughed loudly in response to the manager's words and replied that he did not say to call the shareholders. The man stood in confusion and looked at the main character. He asked not to make a fool of him because he did not understand, if not the shareholders, then who he should call. Jim held out a neatly folded piece of paper and invited the manager to call this number. The man opened the paper and began to dial the phone number. The manager warned the guy that if the answer was unsatisfactory, he would send him to the police. After several rings, the man heard someone pick up the phone and he kindly said hello. A familiar voice was heard on the other line. It was Jim, who kindly greeted him back. The man was confused. He took the first chair he came across and, shouting that he was playing with it again, attacked Jim. The guy told the manager that he did not buy the store and that the man should stop attacking. Jim did not actually buy this store, but he was the owner of the given plot of land on which this building was located. The main character jumped onto the bucket of a large loader and announced that from now on, his company's office would be located here. On the street, 
The now former store manager stood in rage and watched as the jeep moved around the territory in the bucket of a loader. Jim lay down comfortably in the center of the bucket, took a bottle of his favorite lemonade in his hand, and shouted to demolish the buildings. The company manager had no choice but to leave his former place of work with tears in his eyes. The main character turned to a colleague at the store and asked if she was an architect. Surprised by the whole situation, the girl slowly nodded yes. The guy extended his hand towards the girl and offered to join his company as an architect. The next day in the class teacher's office, Miss Gray told Jim that she understood everything. The main character replied that he did not try to hide the secret, and it was normal that the leader found out the truth about everything. The teacher was angry and demanded that Jim admit that his father was the owner of the company, but the guy tried to convince the girl that only he was the owner of the company. Miss Gray told the guy that she was convinced that he really was Rich Dad's son. Jim thought to himself that there was no way his father was rich, according to the teacher. The girl reminded Jim that even though she was his father's employee, Miss Gray had to warn him as a teacher. The guy's class teacher took out a test for social practice, where the score was almost zero, and told the guy that she couldn't go on like this. She understood that a rich son doesn't need to worry about food. Jim remembered how last month he couldn't even afford to buy enough food, let alone worry about it. The teacher continued that the boy also did not need to worry about the clothes and appearance in which he appears at school. The main character remembered how he once washed his white underpants along with his jeans, and now they have blue stripes. The girl ended her list by saying that Jim didn't have to worry about where he needed to work. Jim remembered that yesterday he fired the boss of the store, and now he really doesn't have to worry about where to work. The boy's class teacher reminded him that he should devote more time to social practice, complete an internship, and earn the required number of points. The guy turned to the girl and admitted that he had recently found a construction site for a company building and later wanted to go there to help transport the bricks. The teacher could no longer argue with Jim and let him go, asking him to take care of himself. The main character happily waved his hand towards the teacher, said goodbye, and left to get ready for work. Miss Gray could only shout after Jim as he ran away that he should devote time to the internship, otherwise he would not have the opportunity to get a diploma. A guy came out from around the corner of the corridor and heard a dialogue between a student and a teacher. It was Arthur, who could not understand how the main character could not get a diploma. The guy had a great idea about how Jim wouldn't be able to get the long-awaited points. Arthur took the phone in his hand and made one call. He asked his father to give him money, since there hasn't been enough money lately. Sitting in a cozy office, the father hung up the phone and thought about how to help his son. A man passing by heard the dialogue and said that the father should help his son if he wants to spend the money. The father grinned and answered the guy that money is a small thing, and there is no problem giving it. The young man continued that he heard how all the man's funds had recently been frozen, and he did not understand where he would get so much money for his son. The man shouted back, he asked in surprise who told him this. The guy added that he knew about the secret separation from his wife and that he needed to take all his reserves. The man was furious and did not understand who he was dealing with, whether he was being secretly studied. The guy held out his business card towards the man and suggested that he think about his proposal, otherwise the consequences would not be good. Before leaving, the guy added that it wouldn't be his fault if something happened to his restaurant. The frightened man fell to the floor and picked up the business card, holding it out to him. He saw who he was dealing with. It was Mr. Jason. At this time, at Jim's construction site, work was in full swing without stopping. The guy tried with all his might to finish the construction as soon as possible and help the workers move bricks. Taking a short break, the boy thought that carrying bricks was the best way to relax. The girl's loud voice shouted for all the builders and brothers to go to lunch. Encouraged by this endeavor, Jim hoped to find a tasty and large chicken leg in his lunchbox. The girl took one of the boxes and headed towards the guy. She brought one of the lunchboxes directly into his hands. Jim felt uncomfortable with such politeness on the part of the girl. He suggested that she not do that again, because from now on, they are all family. Before he could reach out and pick up the long-awaited lunchbox, one of the builders got ahead of Jim. The guy asked why he was not in line, but the only answer he heard was that if he doesn't want trouble, then let him stand on the sidelines. Jim's girlfriend was ready to enter into a verbal altercation when a healthy man attacked the girl, saying that he had not seen her before and maybe she wanted to spend time with him. 
At that moment, everything around Jim was burning brightly with a red flame. The guy's anger knew no bounds. One guy from the crowd stopped the main character and asked not to contact him, since they could not allow it. Jim asked the guy in surprise why they couldn't do this. The young man added that his past was connected with one of the street gangs, and this builder is a very dangerous person. Hearing the conversation between the two guys, the builder approached them and asked what they were whispering about and told them to stay away from him, because if something happened, they would be in big trouble. At that moment, someone called the man on the phone and said that he would deal with them when he returned. The guys were scared by what the builder said and continued to look where he was going. The guy asked Jim to leave him alone, otherwise they might have big problems and they wouldn't get paid for their work. The main character laughed and reassured his new friend by saying that he would have problems because Jim was the boss at the construction site. The guy couldn't believe his ears. His boss was standing opposite him and he didn't know what to do next. At that moment, in the corner of the building, a construction worker approached a man who called him on the phone and asked what he could do for him today. The man replied that he had already sent people to the construction site for further disassembly and that he did not need to do anything. Jim accidentally overheard a conversation between two people. He could not suspect that something could be happening on his site right now. The guy literally broke free and ran to the site as quickly as possible. At this moment, a gang of bad guys had already surrounded the protagonist's friends. One of the guy's friends couldn't wait for Jim to come running and help them sort out this situation. The guy took the pain on his body blow after blow. He was so weak that he could not dare to fight back Jim's friend repeated that they would be ruined if they did not stop touching him. One of the villains took a shovel and went straight to the guy. He asked him how much pain it would hurt him if he got hit with a shovel. At that moment, a loud sound was heard. The protagonist's friends looked up and saw the fence. He was behind the villains who suddenly collapsed and a column of dust and smoke suddenly enveloped the entire area. It was Jim's bus, which rushed to save his friends from an evil gang. The bus window rolled down, and Jim asked one of the gang leaders how much it would hurt him if he were hit by a bus. The main character's bus rolled right under the feet of one of the gang's villains and knocked him down. Jim got off the bus and asked the bandit if he was causing problems. The bandit could not expect such impudence from the main character and replied that Jim really doesn't know who their boss is. The guy said that he didn't care who their boss was and slowly picked up a shovel. Someone's steps were heard not far from the bus, it was one of the bandits who told the builder not to do anything and wait. The two guys looked at each other and remembered that they had already encountered each other just recently. Jim shouted towards the old offender that he really wanted to scare the main character. When the bandit realized who he had to meet again, his arms and legs began to tremble sharply. The main character reminded the criminal who he was dealing with, and if he did not leave the site, Jim would no longer be able to hold the shovel. One of the builders shouted to the guy that how dare he behave like that and who the guy thinks he is. Jim laughed loudly in response and asked if he was hanging out with this guy too. The builder replied that there was no one in the area who was not afraid of their gang. After the man said this phrase, a strong blow came to his helmet sharply from behind. Surprised by such impudence, the bandit turned around to look his opponent in the eyes and find out who dared to hit him. Turning back, the man saw a little old woman who could barely stand on her feet and was holding on to her wooden cane with all her might. The builder clearly did not expect such a development of events. He said that his mother was doing here. The old woman loudly and in front of everyone scolded her son, saying that he was a little asshole, and how could he say that someone was tired of living? The guy, unable to withstand the pressure from the old woman, began to cry and asked for an apology from his mother. The woman approached Jim and happily thanked him for being able to pick her up. Otherwise, her son would have made a big mistake. Hearing words of gratitude, the main character admitted that helping people is his passion. After mother and son left the construction site, the main character turned to the main offender. One of the bandits did not expect such a development of events. He replied that he would leave immediately and would not appear here again. Jim asked the bandit not to leave so quickly and to do him a favor, the guy wanted to find out everything about the employer for whom the man works. The young man answered Jim that he could not tell, since there were certain rules and he could not do that. Unexpectedly for the bandit, the main character handed over a whole bunch of money neatly folded in a bag. The young man continued to say that this was not good and that it was still wrong to do this. 
Then Jim took out a second bag of money, and already two bags of money were looking directly at the bandit. Intoxicated by such a sum of money, the bandit still told the guy the name of the boss of his gang, Mr. Smith, and warned that challenging him was complete madness. Jim had no doubt that, depending on the amount of money, the main character would be able to get an answer to any question posed. After all, the mafia is a service industry. The guy continued that it happened that way and that he was going to do something very big for his boss. Being at home, little Chris could not agree with this proposal, and under no circumstances was she ready to meet it halfway. Jim sat opposite the popular streamer and didn't understand how a girl could refuse the boss's words. The girl did not understand how the main character could force her to do this. The guy smiled and continued that the guests just want to play with her and he only asks to accept them. Little Chris shouted to Jim that she never thought he would be such a person. As the guy was about to leave the room, he turned around to remind the girl about the breach of contract. According to the contract that Little Chris signed, failure to fulfill her boss's obligations could cost her dearly. The girl had never met a master of such blackmail. She took off her slipper and was ready to throw it right at Jim. After the main character left her house, Little Chris called Old Man Morty for a serious conversation. The girl told the old man to ask her friend for help. The man was horrified to hear the little girl's request. The girl continued by saying that the only one who can help them is Mr. Jason. He is the only one in the world who will not be dependent on money. Old Man Morty fell to his knees right in front of Chris's feet and once again asked him to think twice because his brother's help would put them in debt. The girl didn't understand since when the old man dared to talk to her like that. Little Chris left the room saying that the old man only had an hour to find and bring him here. After exactly an hour in a cozy Starbucks coffee shop, Little Chris and Mr. Jason were finally able to get to know each other. Sitting at a cozy table, the girl said that his name, like Thunder, sounds very intimidating, but the guy replied that it's just people who give him such a reputation. The girl in desperation began to name the reason why she asked Jason to come here. The guy interrupted Chris slightly and suggested that she stop talking and give him a chance to look through everything. Jason's eyes lit up bright red and the desire to look at the deepest secret in the girl's heart became even greater. The guy saw a car accident at an early age of the girl. He saw screams and children crying next to the broken car. A crowd of people pointed their fingers at the little girl, did not understand where she had come from and what to do with her. The guy saw a crowd of bandits who stood and looked menacingly at the little girl. The young man quickly learned about the secret of little Chris, that the girl at a young age lost both parents and lived on the streets and ruled the local hooligans. Her secret turned out to be very interesting. After Jason revealed the girl's entire past, she fearfully asked how he knew all this. The guy smiled back and replied that she was now in his debt. The girl did not understand what he was talking about, and perhaps now he means that he is ready to completely help her. The guy laughed and replied that of course he understood everything, and now he needed to deal with Jim. Jason remembered that recently many of those around him had begged to help him with this. The guy was happy about this, because it had been a long time since he had met such an opponent, and was already looking forward to looking at his three heads and six arms. One evening, little Chris was sitting alone in her house and expected to receive guests. At that moment, it seemed disgusting to her. The girl remembered that she asked Mr. Jason for help, and understood that Jim would definitely not be able to resist him. According to the operation they planned, the baby gave the command to Mr. Jason that she was ready to begin. Outside the house, already waiting for the command, Jason and Arthur stood together. The guy asked Arthur to hold Jim for a few minutes. When the guy turned away and left to follow the boss's command, Jason decided to take a closer look at the boy's secret. At this time, Jim was approaching a European restaurant, quietly humming the tune of a song. Upon entering the building, Jim ran shoulder to shoulder with Arthur, which greatly surprised him. The guy did not immediately recognize his opponent. He asked the student with a shiny bald head how he could help. Arthur menacingly answered him that how could he not recognize him up close, and why had he come to dine in this particular restaurant? The main character did not reveal all the secrets, and kindly waved his hand and headed straight to the restaurant. Remembering his task, Arthur cried out loudly that this restaurant belonged to his family, and he could tell the cooks to prepare the best table. Jim did not appreciate the courtesy and kindness from his classmate and refused the offer, adding that Arthur made sure that his cooks billed him after dinner. 
The boy had no choice but to simply shout to the entire restaurant that Jim had broken the law. Surprised by this statement, the main character asked the guy where he had broken the law. Then the guy replied that it was in that room that Jim wanted the streamers from his company to receive guests, and this was illegal human trafficking. The main character did not quite understand Arthur's claims and asked to speak with evidence, because his business is completely honest. The boy could not believe Jim's words and moved straight to the central hall to prove that he was right. Approaching the door and opening the main hall, Arthur was in shock. He could not believe that these were really the streamer's guests. Having opened the doors, he saw a large number of small children attacking the young streamer and asking her to play different games with them. Approaching the large hall, Jim put his hand on Arthur's shoulder and asked him if he was now convinced of the honesty of the protagonist. The guy couldn't believe his eyes. Were these guests that Jim was talking about really real children? And then Arthur was disappointed. He could not prove he was right and quietly left the large hall. Seeing the joy of the little children, Jim said that there was no one better than Princess Chris, who was able to accept all these children. At this moment, the little children attacked the charming princess from head to toe. Chris's tears did not have time to flow from her beautiful face. All this time, Jason was watching the whole situation outside the building. He looked through binoculars and did not understand what was happening there. Turning on his red vision, the guy tried to figure out Jim and find out what secrets he kept inside, but of all the events, he could only see a distorted binary code. Little Chris and the main character stood right next to the open window and admired the starry sky. At that moment, the girl told Jim that she had been wrong all along. The guy asked the little girl how she could believe in his twisted mind and that he could do something like that. Little Chris told the guy that he didn't make it clear, and she thought about the first thing that came to her mind. Jim's evil plan did not end there, and this time hosting guests was truly like a free experience, but tomorrow he planned to make the first transaction. Jim recalled that the most difficult part of the main task was creating a company and hiring employees. As soon as the main character thought about this, suddenly someone drove into his shoulder. The young man immediately apologized to Jim and asked if everything was okay. The main character replied that everything was really fine and continued on his way straight to the bus with little Chris. From such a close distance, Jason could only see one number, 11,637, but the guy could not understand what this number could mean. These figures intrigued the young man very much, and he looked after Jim thoughtfully. At this point, Arthur approached Jason and asked what they could do with him. The guy was no less insidious and suggested engaging in battle not directly with Jim, but first starting with the people who were around him. In one of the university classrooms, Miss Gray was checking her students' test papers when her phone suddenly rang. Picking up the phone, she heard the voice of the doctor who was treating her father. She asked how he was doing and how much better he felt. The girl couldn't believe what she heard and simply remained silent, holding the phone to her ear. Jim's former work colleague was sitting right by the window and finishing reading her favorite story when suddenly her phone rang. It was her landlord to whom she was willing to pay rent directly for that month. But at the other end of the line, other information awaited her, from which her eyes filled with fear and excitement. Sitting in her room, little Chris, deliciously eating her sweets, picked up the phone. Hearing the request from the phone, she was upset, lowered her head and replied that she understood everything. After she hung up, she asked one question, what would Jim do now in this situation? At that moment, no one answered Jim's call, and he did not understand why this was happening. The whole point was that all his employees silently quit without saying a word to Jim. He didn't know what to do next because the percentage of completion of the main task was now much lower. Unexpectedly, the main character received an incoming call on his phone. Answering it, Jim was told about the races that would take place that evening. At that moment, Jim heard someone knock on his door. The main character asked who was there and immediately opened the door. There was a tall guy standing outside the door, smiling sweetly. He came to have an interview at Jim's company. A few weeks ago, the main character posted a job advertisement, and today the first person came to him for an interview. After the man entered Jim's room, he saw that the figure that was before had decreased significantly and was now 3.194. The guy who came for the interview was Mr. Jason. He thought that in any case, danger awaited Jim in the final of the car race. On the day of the race, 
all participants in the race arrived at the start line and were ready to compete for the main prize. This race was different in that, unlike the previous ones, it was considered the longest during the entire competition. If you look at the map, you can see how participants need to go from the city center to the eastern part to get a tag and then go west to the end of the city in one go. The main character at that moment was not worried about anything. He had already heard about this racing format and in any case does not lose anything, and if he wins, he will earn. One of the main judges of this race came to the starting line and shouted to all participants that this final was the same as last year, without restrictions on the route and methods, the winner would receive membership in the Club of Divine Heroes. The man continued that in case of defeat, the participants must give up the most valuable thing they have. Jim was surprised by this outcome of events because no one had warned him or told him about this before. The chief judge came to the start line with a large black and white checkered flag and shouted whether all participants were ready to start. The main character turned to his partner and said that he was counting on him because his company was not yet in great demand and he still couldn't just give it away. Jason told his boss that everything would be fine with a small smile on his face. The guy couldn't wait to see what Jim's face would look like after he lost his company. And so the judge waved the flag and the race began. The first powerful sports cars rushed straight ahead one by one. This race took place live. All the people of the city watched as the reigning champion queen of the night took the lead. At that moment, a correspondent from the first national channel was broadcasting live directly from the helicopter. She said that this year, because of the queen of the night, a lot of people came trying to interrupt her streak of victories. The girl added that it turns out she recently found out how the Queen of the Night lost to a mysterious dark horse in the previous preliminary race. The journalist moved the camera a little to the side and said that this car was modified by God, a ghost bus. It was driving slowly and steadily. Inspired by the race, the girl asked if this was really a strategy of the tortoise and the hare. Inside the passenger bus, Jim sat and did not strain, but his partner asked how they were going to win because his car was too slow. The main character took out his phone and reassured the driver. He asked him not to worry, because Jim had everything planned for a long time. Jim put the phone to his ear, dialed the police number, and began shouting hello loudly into the phone several times. At that moment, the bus was moving in an area where there was no network and Jim could not dial the police number. Jason looked at the main character and saw that Jim had nothing planned, because he had thoroughly prepared for the race and was aware that today there would be no network in the entire city. The guy thought for a second and thought that if nothing appeared, he would have to use Plan B, Super Acceleration. Jim showed his partner where to go next. Jason asked his boss if he was sure of what he was doing because this road leads to the south of the city. The guy looked at him and replied that everything was correct because only with the help of a workaround they could speed up. At this time, other participants in the race rushed forward so quickly and swiftly that they had already reached the main control point of the city. Arthur, sitting in the car, shouted contentedly that Jim's bus was so slow that nothing could correct his situation. Having reached the checkpoint, the guy drove up to the judge, who left a stamp with a marker that he could continue the race. The guy stuck his hand out into the light to see the seal made with a marker and was surprised that it suddenly began to snow. Arthur couldn't understand how it could snow in the summer. Looking up, several huge planes were flying high in the sky, throwing snow directly onto the city road. At that moment, Jim's bus seemed to be racing down a hill on a sled straight down the road using special modified skis for transport. The main character opened the window and, with a snowball in his hand, shouted that accelerating in the snow and rolling on it was as easy as shelling pears. Jim looked at Arthur's car, which could barely cope with control, and happily watched what would happen next. The guy's car drove into a pole, then he ran out of the car and with tears in his eyes shouted why he was doing all this, why it suddenly started snowing. He raised his head up and indeed, it was several planes filled with a pile of snow that threw him off on the city street. Jim sat calmly on the bus, because this was his secret plan for true acceleration. It was all about artificial snowfall. Jim's partner clearly did not expect such a development of events. He thought that detouring through the southern part of the city just to get to the control point did not give him a clear advantage. A few moments earlier, Jim had arrived at the military base and ordered some snow to be delivered to him by planes, missiles, artillery, whatever they had. 
He added that money was not an issue. The main character asked to give him a couple more caterpillars, then they waited for his signal and only then started snowing. Jim's plan really worked, and it was like he was racing on the tracks of a yellow bus at a snowy resort, and only Jason didn't understand how he could manage so much money. Was his company really worth such an investment? The guy turned to his boss and warned that the snow reserves on the plains were completely exhausted, so there would be no more snow. Jim's partner didn't understand why they couldn't just go to the office and bribe the judge with money. The guy added that in this case, people would catch him in the act, and he would lose all his reputation and money. At this moment, Jim sharply indicated to Jason to change direction and listen only to him, and now head north. The guy could not understand why he wanted to go straight to the city center. The main character asked to trust him and just believe, and only in this case they will be able to win the race. Jim asked his employee to hurry up, because today was his first day at work and he needed to fulfill all his requests. All the race judges were already at the finish line. Correspondents and cameras were waiting for the winners. There were only a few miles left to the finish line and the race would soon end. Several cars raced to the finish line. This was the first group, but in this group there was no sign of the queen of the night. No one understood what happened to her, because she was always in front. The girl drove the car tensely. She was driving behind several cars and didn't understand why they didn't fall into any traps. At that moment, the girl decided to press the nitro button and speed up, overtaking all her rivals right before the finish line. An enthusiastic journalist, seeing how the queen of the night was accelerating, shouted that apparently she was saving her strength and the champion would definitely win this race. Unexpectedly for all the race participants, journalists, and spectators, a loud train sound was heard. The Queen of the Night shouted that it was a trap and suddenly braked. She managed to react and press the brake pedal right in front of the high-speed railway. She did not understand why the train appeared here at this time. The girl said if this was all part of Jim's insidious plan and added that before this train appeared, she was still ahead. Unexpectedly for the Queen, Jim's yellow bus appeared at night after several carriages. While passing his rival, the main character said that, as the old proverb says, behind every successful man there is always a woman who silently supports him, and it looks like this woman is you. Jim opened the window and shouted contentedly that if her car was called night snow, then it was called day ice. Right before the finish line, the main character shouted daytime ice, transformation, as if he were the owner not of a bus, but of one of the transformers. The special skis that were put on the wheels of the bus suddenly came unhooked, and Jim, with his hand raised up, shouted full speed ahead. The girl sat silently behind the wheel of the car and watched as Jim rushed to the finish line on a yellow bus, and although the rules did not prohibit this, it was too much to slow down cars by train. The Queen of the Night laughed and added that it was a great plan to turn a car into a train and one of Jim's best tricks. Suddenly, the girl opened a special toggle switch on the steering wheel. The guy didn't know, but she also had an ace up her sleeve. This button was intended only for emergencies. The girl loudly shouted the night snow transformation, and the car suddenly flew into the air and began to transform into something new and super fast. The racer's car was transformed into a super powerful bike, which suddenly went to catch up with Jim, pressing nitro at full power. At this moment, the main character's driver couldn't believe that he was using a high-speed train for a bus. Jason thought Jim was some kind of genius, and how could he come up with this? The main character did not have time to think how bored he was, that there were no rivals around, when suddenly in the rearview mirror he saw the Queen of the Night quickly catching up with him on a cool and powerful bike. The girl assumed that this could happen and prepared a cunning plan in advance, thanks to which Jim would lose this time. When the Queen of the Night rushed past Jim, he enthusiastically said that today she was wearing black again. Jason heard these words, and he could not understand where the main character saw black and what black she was wearing. The teammate asked the boss if they weren't going to speed up and win this race. Jim sat calmly in the passenger seat with a delicious dinner on his lap and told his partner that they had already won. There were only a few hundred meters left for the Queen of the Night to win, and it seemed that no one could stop her. Inspired spectators, fans, and journalists were glad that the Queen of the Night became the winner of the race. The girl has once again become the winner of the race, and her car has evolved. Jim took second place in the race on a yellow bus. It was the same ghost bus. 
The girl drove up to Jim and shouted that this time he lost. Jim's bus slowly and leisurely began to drive away. Apparently, he was unable to admit defeat and wanted to escape. Opening the window, Jim turned around and loudly shouted for his comrades to finish and go get their long-awaited salary. All the people who were present at that moment dropped everything and immediately ran to Jim's bus. Neither the queen of the night, nor the cameramen, nor the journalists understood what was happening here. They stood and silently watched as some people ran towards Jim's bus. At one point, the girl realized that this was not a real finish. A joyful crowd of fans at the finish line threw Jim up and shouted that he was number one in the world. The girl couldn't believe that today Jim won so easily. She couldn't quite believe how cleverly he had outwitted her. At that moment, Jason approached the queen of the night and asked that he was curious about how she and several other girls ran into Jim. The girl replied that this had nothing to do with him. She added that he was the number one eye that could see right through everyone. She asked the guy why he couldn't handle Jim. But the guy could not see right through Jim. Moreover, he even admired him a little. Every time Jason tried to look right through Jim, he wondered what those numbers on his body meant. Satisfied with the race, Jim approached his partner and pleased him that he would add another chicken leg for lunch today. The girl looked angrily at the main character and asked if it was he who invited all these spectators. The guy shouted that from this day on, all these people are employees of Jim's company. Jim approached his employee and asked him to bring back all the people who had recently left his company. Jason was surprised by this and asked how they could get them back. At that moment, the guy realized that he shouldn't know about them, and this was a test on Jim's part. The guy quickly switched to another topic and added that didn't they say that they would celebrate Jim's victory today? The main character said that there is no point in celebrating. Today it is easier to distribute money and everyone will be happy. Jim told his partner to get on the bus to get out of here. At that moment, the main character realized that behind him was a very difficult guy who just came to work for him. Jim drove straight into town, leaving behind the queen at night who watched the bus leave. The girl was angry. She turned around and left saying that even Jason had failed in this matter. The thirst for revenge enveloped the girl more and more, and this time it was time to teach Jim a real lesson. Jim's bus drove straight to little Chris's house and stopped right in front of her gate. When Jim and Jim entered the girl's house, he stopped and could not believe his eyes. Opposite him stood two girls. Little Chris was proving to Officer May that she had not done this for a long time. Officer May warned the little girl and said that all the evidence pointed to her and that she wouldn't get away with it this time. Taking a short pause and indicating his presence, Jim decided to ask what was going on here and what little Chris and Officer May were discussing among themselves. When the officer saw Jim, she asked him if he had anything to do with little Chris, who was in a gang. The girl was angry and shouted to Jim that it was all because of him. Two guys stood at the entrance and waited to see how this legendary battle between one girl and another would end. Jim decided to take control of the situation and shouted loudly for the girls to stop arguing and tell him what was happening here. The girls seemed to have broken their chains and loudly interrupting each other began to accuse that one of them is a streamer and is suspected of involvement in the recent fraud with the streaming platform, and the other that these accusations are completely false and she cannot in any way be accused of this in fact. At one point, Jim simply swam from such a flow of information and did not understand how to react in such a situation, and first of all, he covered little Chris's mouth. The main character suggested that the girls calm down and first sit down on the sofa and start the dialogue again slowly and one by one. When everyone sat down on the sofa, the officer began to say that everything happened this morning. The streaming platform launched a discount on replenishing your balance. To get 50, you had to deposit one yuan. Jim was shocked by this information. He could not believe that he did not know about this before. For him, it was not just a big loss. It was a huge loss. Officer May continued that quite a lot of spectators participated in this event. The replenishment of the balance was successful, but after that, a problem arose. All the managers and moderators of the live broadcast simultaneously disappeared and left the office. The police officer added that all the criminals disappeared along with the money, and the only person who could now be found was little Chris. She was one of the main persons. The girl did not agree with the accusations that were directed at her and argued that she could not possibly be involved in this case. Jim hugged little Chris and reassured her. He said that he believed her and everything would be fine. 
Jin stood up for his employee, saying that he trusts everyone unconditionally and that they should not be accused without taking into account the facts of the crime. Jim proudly said that if they want to blame little Chris, then he takes all the blame. The police officer quietly got up from the couch and told Jim that he had helped the police several times, and therefore this time she would just give him a warning. The girl said that a special investigation team was created for this case, and the guys have only two days to correct the situation. The main character was ready for such an outcome of events, and two days was more than enough for him. When the police officer left the house, the girl thanked the main character, saying thank you for being able to stand up for her because she had recently quit, and Jim still continues to help her. The guy took the girl and added that she was still one of the most beautiful employees of his company. From hearing the words, little Chris melted and fell into the arms of the main character. They looked at each other for a long time, and it seemed that a spark had slipped between them. Suddenly, someone interrupted the young people with a loud cough, and the silhouette of a tall and slender woman appeared not far from them. It was Jim's partner, Alice. The girl's appearance had changed a lot. She said that his prediction had come true and they could start. The main character was surprised that Alice was with him again. Apparently something happened, as he expected. Little Chris approached the girl and asked for forgiveness for hypnotizing him earlier. The girl replied that the hypnosis had long since passed and at the moment she had quit her main job and was working exclusively as Jim's personal assistant. The main character was really glad to see his partner. He patted her on the shoulder and offered to take care of the fugitives. As everyone walked out the door and headed to Jim's bus, little Chris asked if he predicted that something would happen at the cockfight broadcast. The main character replied that he just had a vague feeling that something might happen soon, so he sent people to train stations, airports, and highways. Jim's partner said that they recently learned that several hidden individuals were using these vehicles, but after tracking, there was a small problem. She pulled out some photos and pointed out one of the investors, who was a rich kid and one of the shareholders of the cockfight broadcast, and also one of the criminals who ran away with the money. Jim carefully took the photograph in his hands and began to study the auctioneer's face. He asked if an investigation had already been carried out. The girl nodded her head confidently and added that tonight he would take part in an online gaming tournament. Jim was very surprised by this and asked again about what online games. The main character loudly stomped his foot and shouted that don't decide in games because he's the best at it. The guy was going home to play games, but his partner Jason rushed straight after him. Jim kindly asked him not to follow him and that he could be free for today. The man added that he could take him home. Jim showed the guy that Alice had already taken his place. She had returned, and so he could rest a little. Jason had already gotten so close to the main character, he offered to provide any help whatever the boss told him. The cunning guy was ready to just pretend that he was helping. This alarmed the main character, and for a second he thought about it. But the main character decided to give Jason a chance to help, and ordered him to prepare a bath for washing his feet. When he returned, he would wash them with pleasure, after which the bus doors closed and he drove forward. After the bus started moving, little Chris saw Jim's new partner. Jason, or as he is called on the streets of Dragon City, he is not so simple. The main character was surprised by what he heard from the girl. Did she really want to say that the closure of the broadcast was somehow connected with him? The girl approached Jim and replied that it was quite possible that he had something to do with this. The guy laughed because he had known this for a long time. But the girl didn't understand why Jim still kept his partner nearby. The guy said that when Jason is near him, his tricks can't work. That night, in one of the rich houses in the area, among a bunch of cool monitors, the sounds of a keyboard were heard. One of the rich sons sat at home and honed his gaming skills in one online game, where he was invincible and had no rivals. Celebrating another victory over his opponent and looking at the incredibly cool skin in the game, the guy thought that no one else would dare to challenge him. At one point, he saw the inscription on the screen of his monitor as a new opponent entered the game. He was happy, because in front of him was another weakling. It was Jim Skin, who registered in this game from scratch. The guy didn't spare his opponent for a second. He noticed that he didn't even have a kit for beginners. Apparently, he was a complete dummy, and suddenly he started clicking the mouse to kill the hero. The young man had already seen how a fight with a player like him would bring him a long-awaited victory. Unexpectedly, for a professional player, his hero was brutally beaten by a newcomer in the role of Jim. 
At the end of the battle, Jim made a remark about how a loser really defeated such a strong player solo. The young guy was shocked by what he saw. For him, it was simply impossible. He could not believe his defeat. There was no limit to his rage. He literally broke his keyboard to pieces. The guy could not defeat Jim without equipment, even with the best equipment of the Golden Gods. The guy used voice chat and loudly shouted to his opponent that this couldn't happen, there was no victory without equipment, and that he was a cheater. Jim answered him in response that where did he see that he was without equipment, because not everyone could afford such equipment as he had. The guy could not believe that in front of him was a legendary donation disguise in the form of transparent armor, the chance of which was 0.01%. It turns out that Jim was a donation maniac compared to the young guy, considering how much money he donated to this game. The guy calmly sat down at his table, a bank card lay in front of him, and he was wondering whether he should use the remaining money and donate everything into the game. At this moment, Jim decided to finish off his opponent by saying that there was no point in him playing this game anymore, because the legend was already here. The guy immediately grabbed a bank card. There was no way he could lose to this opponent and went into the game store. The guy went to the equipment lottery section, where he was required to confirm a payment of 64,000 yuan, after which he received 100 times 10 spins in a row. He thought this was a great method to test his luck. The guy immediately began trying to knock out a rare skin. One by one pressing the keyboard, he tried to find the long-awaited armor, but the number of spins was so huge that the man got confused in them and did not understand where to press next. At one point, a message came in the guy's personal messages where someone wrote, It was a message from Jim. He offered the guy to sell the legendary donated transparent armor if he was willing to agree. The guy couldn't believe this message. Apparently, Jim wanted to make big money from it. The man shouted loudly that he was a great player, and even if he died like a vegetable or jumped off a building, he would never want to get the superior transparent armor. But the offer was so tempting that in just a few seconds, the guy was ready to make a deal with Jim. After some time, this happened, and the number one character appeared again in this online game, and it was the skin of a rich son. Jim was incredibly happy about this outcome of events because he got what he wanted. Little Chris turned to Jim. She was grateful that he did this for her and that he was ready to sacrifice even such rare equipment. The guy turned to the girl and asked in surprise what kind of rare equipment we were talking about because he had a dozen of such skins. The main character opened several of his accounts in this game and showed the girl what he had recently talked about. The rarest skins that could only be found in this online game appeared on the screens. Jim opened the shelf and from under the table took out a paper that proved that the guy bought this gaming company, and now he is the owner. Little Chris screamed with delight at how Jim could buy an entire gaming company. The main character replied that, to be precise, he did not buy it, but simply exchanged it. The girl, frightened and with tears in her eyes, continued that Jim had really exchanged the whole company for her. Little Chris winked at the guy, saying that if he liked her so much, then he could, but the guy interrupted her by answering that he couldn't do it yet, since she wanted it. The main character shouted loudly that he would never be able to exchange the company that belongs to Jim, so he shouldn't be stupid. Jim's partner stood quietly on the sidelines. She shyly said that he was the legendary straightforward man of tempered steel. One of the girls still did not understand what had happened and tried to get an answer to the question. Jim asked the little girl to remember the rules of the race, because they said that the loser must give up his most valuable property. Jim found a large stack of papers. He exchanged several small companies for 60% of the shares of this gaming company. Next, the main character said that he asked the programmers to add a few numbers to the characteristics. Thanks to these numbers, an ordinary skin in an online game has turned into mega-powerful armor. The girl asked the main character if transparent armor actually exists. Jim's partner asked if it turns out that the so-called transparent armor is that it allows programmers to change data directly in the online game. The main character laughed out loud because he was happy that he got everything he wanted from the rich son. In addition, he gave him a lot, so Jim didn't mind tweaking a few characteristics for him. Little Chris heard Jim say that he got what he wanted, and this was proof of the girl's innocence. Jim shouted that of course not, to remove any doubt that he actually liked the girl a little. Alice stood nearby and shook her head. 
She couldn't understand how it was possible to say that. The girl could no longer listen to Jim speak ironically and straightforwardly. Suddenly, Jim jumped up right in the middle of the room and shouted that they needed to go somewhere else because he had a list of everyone who was involved in setting up little Chris. In one of the night bars where wealthy people usually gather, one girl was performing a song in the center of the stage. One of the bar visitors asked the waiter why he had not seen this beautiful singer before. The young waiter praised the boss for his good taste and added that there was a new singer performing on stage who looked amazing. The man was surprised and asked to describe to him what this young singer really looks like. The young guy said that she usually doesn't show her face, but one of the girls at the bar saw her and said that she looked incredibly beautiful. The man ordered the waiter to send this girl straight to his room. In the middle of the girl's performance, security men in formal suits surrounded her. The girl screamed in fear what they wanted from her. After some time, the man's guards brought the girl straight to his room, and he asked him to hurt her. The fat man continued to pull his dirty hands towards the body of the beautiful girl. The girl did not resist and kindly reciprocated and put her hand directly on his body. At one point, the beauty threw the big man aside and asked if this didn't make him happy. The man remained in shock and silently looked at her. Taking off his mask and lowering his wig, Jim appeared in front of the man, who smiled joyfully and said that it was a disappointment. The men could not understand who was in front of him and where that beautiful beauty had gone. Jim was furious, and he answered the man that he really still had the courage to ask about this. Isn't he good enough to satisfy him? After several screams, the man could not stand it, took the walkie-talkie in his hand and ordered his guards to immediately run to him, because some crazy pervert was next to him. A few minutes later, security consisting of strong, muscular, and tall men ran into the boss's room and surrounded Jim. The man angrily said that Jim had ruined his mood and now he was waiting for payment for it. The main character abruptly took off his wig, threw it on the floor, and shouted that this whole situation had gone too far. Jim looked at the guards and said maybe his people were too good, but the main character still had a gun. The security, led by the boss, stood in a stupor for several seconds and did not understand how to react to Jim's words. As a result, the boss shouted that the guy was taking them for idiots and ordered the guards to take him. When one of the guards began to engage in battle with Jim, the guy immediately fired his hand pistol. As soon as the main character fired the shot, the guard immediately fell to the floor. Everyone around was surprised and did not understand how this could happen. Jim got the hang of it, and as if in some online game, he accurately hit his opponent's targets with one shot after another. When there was no enemy in front of the main character, he slowly approached the boss and pointed the gun directly at him. He touched the gun directly to the boss's forehead and asked him to listen carefully to what he had to say. The man was so frightened by this situation that he responded in horror that he would do whatever Jim said. Jim pointed his thumb straight out the window as if to signal that everything had gone well. On the next building, there were two of Jim's partners. They had two high-precision rifles with a sniper scope, equipped with anesthesia cartridges. Surprisingly, the beauty Mia watched this whole situation on the roof of the house. She saw two girls in binoculars and waited to see what Jim's next step would be. After some time, all the defendants in the case were caught by Jim and taken to the police department. Officer May couldn't believe Jim did the job so quickly and well and thanked him. Little Chris was almost torn to pieces on the spot because she was right that she had nothing to do with this matter. Officer May turned to the girl and said that although this had nothing to do with her, this situation was still not as simple as it seemed. Little Chris shouted to the officer that it wasn't enough to find all the criminals. The girl shook her head hopelessly because there is someone behind these people and they are very powerful. Jim suggested that given the above, these are the same ones that many companies have recently raised black funds. Suddenly, a man appeared behind the main character who confirmed Jim's words and added that the guy was very smart. The man added that all departments attach great importance to this issue and now they do not have sufficient evidence. The police officer surrounded Jim and looked at him intently. The main character did not understand how he deserved such close attention to himself. Officer May approached her father and explained that he wanted to let Jim do the investigation as a freelancer. The main character was surprised and asked again if he was now a secret agent. Officer May beat her little fists on her father. She said that there is no need to force other people to do such dangerous things. Dad smiled kindly and replied that he knew how important Jim was to her, and it didn't matter that she loved the guy.
but everything depended only on him. Jim entered the family dialogue and said that this mission was really too dangerous for him. May's father understood the complexity of the operation and reassured the guy. He said that it was nothing to worry about and understood everything. Imbued with this situation, Jim added that now they will have to add even more money. The father laughed loudly and said that young people are so ambitious. The officer handed Jim a package with evidence and a task. He asked the guy to prepare well and after that he could begin. This package contained everything that could connect them. The man approached the main character and added that this mission is really expensive, but the glory that he will bring will be priceless. Jim put his hood over his head and added that all the missions he had carried out had never failed. The man was very pleased that they invited the guy to complete this task. He seemed very interesting to him, and if everything went well, he would continue to cooperate with Jim. The girl turned to her father and reminded him that there was and could not be anything between them, and that next time he should not talk nonsense. The next morning Jim went to the university. The next battle was to begin on campus. The folder that was given to Jim contained all the necessary information about the next participant in the crime, and it was a teacher who was at the protagonist's university. This was the hero of our time, an art teacher who was surrounded by boundless attention from young female students. Jim was very adamantly opposed to this teacher, and he only had one impression. The art teacher dared to hit on Teacher Gray, whom Jim liked so much. The main character put on black glasses and said that now he must investigate everything, and the matter of investigation begins. Early in the morning, Miss Gray sat silently in the office and looked out the window with hope. At that moment, the sound of a mobile phone was heard, and the contact of the attending physician who was monitoring her father's health was displayed on the screen. The doctor reported with horror that the father had disappeared from the hospital and no one had seen him. Miss Gray did not understand how this could even happen, how her father could disappear, because he could not move during the recovery period. The doctor suggested that perhaps someone could take him away. After some time, the teacher ran to the hospital where her father had disappeared from. She saw complete chaos in his room. She asked the policeman if there was any evidence. Mr. Policeman shook his head that he didn't know, but was aware that it was a group of people in black who ran into the ward at night and kidnapped the teacher's father. He asked if they had enemies and what about their intentions. The girl admitted that in fact she had conflicts, but this was not a reason to kidnap her father. At one point an SMS came to the teacher's phone saying that her father was with them and that she should not contact the police. The policeman suspected something was wrong and asked if everything was okay. Miss Gray carefully told the man that nothing had happened and everything was fine. She referred to the fact that one of her students was having problems at the university and she needed to escape. When the girl returned to her office, she thought that perhaps these kidnappers were enemies of Jim's family business. She took the student's card and thought that she should warn him, but it was so dangerous because her father was still in the hands of bandits. Suddenly a hand appeared right in front of the girl, reaching straight towards her. The teacher was surprised because right in front of her stood Teacher Jack, who asked the girl if she had thought well, because earlier he had invited her on a date. Miss Gray asked to forget about it because she already has a boyfriend. The teacher was furious because she thought so much about his proposal and eventually refused. He could not stand the refusal and looked at her angrily. The teacher apologized to her colleague, but in response she only heard that she should not be so shameless because the man knows that she conducts private broadcasts. The girl stood in horror. She didn't know what to answer, and the man continued to mock her because it seemed to him that she just liked it when men looked at her. Teacher Jack quickly began to approach the teacher. She screamed in horror what he wanted to do to her and took a few steps back. The man wanted to get a real internet celebrity who was the hottest streamer. He wanted her to belong only to him. The girl began to scream in horror because they began to paw her from behind. But it was not the teacher because he stood in the same place and his hands were far from Teacher Gray. Unnoticed, Jim crept up to the girl and asked how this could be regarded. The boy smiled and added that this was a normal concern on the part of the boss. Teacher Gray could not have expected that her student would immediately be nearby at the right moment. Teacher Jack asked how Jim was able to climb here through the window because they are on the seventh floor. The young man carefully took the teacher by the hands and together they went out the window straight to the crane that was waiting for them outside. 
The young man hugged the teacher tightly and wondered if it was impossible to get to the seventh floor simply by purchasing a crane. Teacher Miss Gray approached Jim and asked him to stop causing problems in front of other teachers. The guy asked, It turns out that if there is no one, the boy will be able to do whatever he wants. At that moment, a bright beam like a laser flew next to Jim's head. The main character turned to the side and saw fire burning from the teacher's finger. The man threatened the boy to get out of here because Miss Gray is his woman and he likes him very much. But the guy was in no hurry to run away. On the contrary, he turned to the teacher and said that Teacher Gray was his girlfriend. Jim continued to say that the light on the teacher's hand was the same as his brother Mr. Jason's. The teacher asked the student if he really wanted to give away all the secrets of his family. Mr. Jack gave the teacher one last chance and threatened that if she did not go with him, he would not be able to guarantee the safety and integrity of her father. Miss Gray couldn't believe his words. Was he really one of the kidnappers who stole her father from the hospital? Right at that second, someone took the teacher's hand and squeezed it tightly. She raised her head and saw Jim, who asked not to worry because he was here and ready to help her. The girl asked Jim how he could help her, because even the police could not find the kidnappers. Jim interrupted the teacher and was glad that he had already found her father. When Teacher Jack heard Jim's words, he could not believe it, because the influence of his family extends to all high-ranking bodies of this city. Jim wondered at this. Are they really strong because the powerful, but even the simplest people are better than them? Enraged, Jack asked what Jim might know about this and threw a piece of metal at him. This cartridge whistled past the couple and hit the crane where the young people were. The shot was so powerful that the crane shattered in a second, leaving Jim by surprise with no hope of what to do next. Suddenly for everyone, the main character simply froze in the air in his arms with the teacher, when a multi-ton crane collapsed under him and fell down. This was impossible. Jack looked in amazement as Jim was hanging on the street in front of him like Superman. The main character asked the teacher if he had ever seen this trick being filmed in a movie. Using a cable is much cheaper than buying a crane. Jim waved contentedly across from Teacher Jack and, together with Miss Gray, headed straight to the roof of the building. After some time, the man climbed to the roof of the building where Jim and Miss Gray had gone. He carefully opened the door. He saw that at that moment the girl, together with the main character, was hugging her father, who miraculously found himself on the roof of the building in a wheelchair. The boy smiled and said that he had not lied when he promised to find his father-in-law. All this time, Teacher Jack stood on the roof of the building and watched all this. He could not understand how Jim managed to find and deliver the teacher's father directly into her hands. The man continued to watch the happy family and was amazed how this could all happen. At that moment, someone's hand suddenly fell on the man's shoulder and he warily turned to the side. Next to him stood Jim, who was sobbing loudly with tears right in front of the teacher. Jack asked the main character why he was whining. The boy slowly wiped away a couple of tears from his face and replied, that isn't it the most touching scene when a father and his daughter are reunited together. Then the teacher loudly answered the main character that he was really still laughing at him, and he still wanted to know how Jim was able to save his father. The guy replied that money is all he has, and doesn't he really know how he managed to pull it all off? The teacher was very surprised at Jim's words. Could he really bribe everyone for money? to which Jim replied that he knew nothing and why Teacher Jack was asking him about it. Then the man took out his phone and quickly began dialing the number of one of his subordinates, who was supposed to keep an eye on his father. The phone was answered immediately, and a frightened voice on the phone asked if there would be any further instructions. The boss was furious. He asked what instructions he was talking about, because as it turned out, his employees were following the instructions of competitors, but the guy replied that it was all a lie and they always only listened to his instructions and never worked for competitors. The phone that Teacher Jack was calling was literally shaking and bursting with his screams. He was trying to get the truth and find out why they took the money from Jim and let the old man go. When his employee turned his head, he saw that the father of Teacher Gray was lying on the bed in pajamas and under a blanket and next to him stood guards who had been sent to watch so that he would not run away anywhere. The man replied that everything was fine, and the old man they needed to keep an eye on was right here. It seemed that a little more and Jack would burst with anger. When he heard what they told him on the phone, 
he asked why they were still denying it. At one point, the teacher realized that this whole scheme with the old man was a trap. When he turned back, the wheelchair was already empty, and at the same time, an old man was literally flying towards him like a bird in the sky. As if a gymnast at the Olympic Games, the man delicately stole the teacher's phone and landed on his feet, all the judges gave this performance 100 points. The man looked at Jim in fear and asked what he was up to and going to do. The guy loudly replied that now he was going to get even with him, so that the teacher would understand how badly he had done. A special tool for recognizing the exact location was hidden next to the stroller under a red curtain. Jim immediately connected his phone to this device, and after a few seconds he saw the exact location of his real father. According to the coordinates that were obtained thanks to the data from the device, they easily determined that the caller was located near the suburbs, and they should go there immediately. At that same second, the father, who had been on the roof all this time and was building the real one, tore off his mask and tore all his pajamas, and right under it was Jim's partner, Alice. The girl quickly ran forward, and after taking a few steps, she jumped straight from the roof and opened her incredibly cool cloak, thanks to which she could now soar like a bird. All this time, the teacher remained in the arms of Jim, who calmed her down and said that everything would now be under control, and asked her to tell him how to punish Teacher Jack. The teacher slowly leaned against Jim's ear and whispered, the main character was shocked by the words he heard. Did she really want to take revenge on her offender so harshly? If this is so, then the teacher will simply burn with shame. Despite the fact that this punishment was incredibly harsh, the guy liked this idea and agreed with Miss Gray's words. The next day, several beautiful girls stood right outside the teacher's room, waiting for Teacher Jack. At one point, the long-awaited man appeared right in front of them. They were very happy about it and could not believe that it was really him. The man walked towards the girls, his hair was shining, such a figure could only belong to him, his gaze was confident, his gait was even. The students could not take their eyes off the favorite of the entire university and continued to shout after him. Coming close to the girls, the man calmly said that the students should calm down, although they liked him, he should focus on work. The girls looked at the man carefully and asked in surprise who he was. The man continued that he was their teacher Jack. The man loudly and furiously tried to prove that it was really him in front of them. The teacher did not convince the girls, and they replied that he was the same teacher Jack as they could be a gorgeous ballerina. The university students laughed, turned around, and calmly left. The main character shaved off teacher Jack's hair, and he promised to remember it. Not far from the university, all of Jim's employees were standing on the street near one of the culinary shops. Seeing this, Alice asked the main character what they were doing there. Jim replied that when the company had a lot of money again, it would allow him to start a new business plan, but so far his percentage of completion of his main task was only about 72.5%. The girl was surprised and asked what plan we were talking about and why the main character called it new. Jim confidently replied that he had already thought of everything and would soon be ready to talk about his first clients. Jim took out a list of names and handed them over to Alice. He asked her to find these people for him. The girl carefully studied every name, every number on Jim's client list. She asked in surprise whether they really needed to be found. This list included people such as a police officer, a former owner of a convenience store, and Jim's classmate Arthur. The girl was surprised because she had recently brought them all. One of the former convenience store owners was not worthy of Jim looking for him. The police officer who let Jim get away last time was demoted three ranks long ago. Well, poor Arthur, who lost the last two races and dinner to Jim, didn't understand what he was up to again. The main character smiled broadly and said, Don't they still realize what unites them all? The young people looked at each other and said questioningly that perhaps he had deceived them all. But everything turned out to be much simpler, and Jim replied that all they had in common was that they were bald. At that moment, Jim took out a huge briefcase and proudly announced that in front of them was his new business plan, which was to sell artificial hair. The young people all shouted loudly with one voice that the main character had gone crazy and wasn't artificial hair sold everywhere. But the guy answered them that if all these wigs affect a person in such a way that other people show unlimited sympathy for them. One of the guys shouted that all his advertising was complete nonsense, 
but Jim asked people to turn around and look at the live example that was standing right behind them. When the men turned around, they saw Alice holding a purple wig in her hand. She looked at them in surprise, but Jim added that the changes in the girl's body were caused by the wig. The bald men found it hard to believe that wearing a wig would make people fall in love with them and asked Jim who he was lying to. But the main character continued to stick to his line and asked to look at Alice again and think carefully about whether she was like this before. Arthur began to remember what the girl was like. He remembered that before she was much gentler and better looking and was much charming. Everything was absolutely accurate, and Jim pulled out a beautiful and long wig with silky hair. He offered to tell the guys another secret why Teacher Jack is so popular. Arthur asked controversially, that isn't it because he's talented and handsome. The guy quickly took out his phone and went to a top-secret folder with personal photos of the teacher. He said that he discovered this when he was studying it. In the past, Teacher Jack complained that no one liked him and no one paid attention to him. But later he came across me and bought one of the wigs, and after that, everyone started loving him. But today Jim took the man's wig and everything became the same for him as before. When Arthur took Jim's phone and looked at the photo, he couldn't believe that in front of him in the photos was really Teacher Jack. Jim happily added that it was actually very difficult to recognize the teacher without his wig. The guy took his bald head and asked the question whether his baldness was the reason for his unpopularity. Jim insidiously replied that he should think about it, because the teacher had no hair and no one liked him, but with hair everything appeared at once. But Arthur still doubted Jim's words. He believed that the guy was lying and Teacher Jack could not buy a wig from him. The main character confidently said that he had all the evidence, especially since Arthur had already begun to doubt that the teacher was wearing a wig. Gene took out his phone and was going to show a video where today he went to collect money for a wig from Teacher Jack, and he wanted to take a promissory note from him that Jim would not sell wigs to anyone else, but the guy refused. The guy still felt some kind of trick on Jim's part. Did the teacher really buy a wig? The main character continued to insist and convince Arthur he offered to touch the quality and feel the wonderful aroma of the new wig. The young guy couldn't resist sniffing how good the wig smelled. This smell brought tears of happiness and joy to Arthur's face. Jim was pleased because his sales plan worked successfully, and the guy asked how much he could sell this wig for. The main character shook his head and asked how he could take money from him because he is a student. Where did he get it from? Arthur was furious. He shouted that who told him this because he has everything. He asked Jim to stop looking down on people since he has so much money. The guy picked up all the bank cards and threw them towards Jim, saying that the money was nonsense and he could take as much as he wanted. Alice slowly approached the main character and whispered that he was not in a too excited state. Jim said that this wig contains a special Chinese medicine potion. The girl said that the young guy had already been cheated out of a lot of money. Wasn't that enough? At this moment, Jim shouted sharply what kind of car Alice wanted. Not far from the company stood an expensive and sports car, which was in Arthur's possession. The guy was in such deep despair that he didn't think for a second that he was giving the car keys directly into Jim's hands. Satisfied, Jim and Alice stood next to the car. The girl asked that the guy had deceived him so many times. Wasn't that too much? But the main character answered in surprise that it wasn't too much. Shouldn't he thank him for that? And now, having been transformed beyond recognition, the young people put shiny wigs on their heads and loudly thanked Jim for the given opportunity. The main character immediately opened his all-in system and checked that the first transaction was completed successfully, the office location was ready, and the employment of employees was completed. You can receive a reward for the first task. But unexpectedly for Jim, a glitch occurred in the system, and the percentage of task completion was only 85%. An unknown error appeared that there was a discrepancy between the employee's personality and the real person. The main character immediately realized that the employee's identity did not match the documents. He thought that all the new employees confirmed their identity, and maybe the only one who did not do so. Three suspects appeared before Jim's eyes, two partners and an assistant from his former place of work. First of all, Jim took his mobile phone and dialed the number of his partner, Jason. The guy kindly answered the call and asked if there were any instructions for him. The guy replied that he needed to discuss something with him and ask his advice. Jason was happy because finally the guy needed his help. He agreed without any problems. 
adding that no matter what task, he would definitely help him. The main character appreciated the devotion of his partner. Jason's eyes said that no matter what it was, he would still punish Jim once and for all. Jim happily said that Jason had been fired and was no longer working with him and quickly hung up. The guy was so furious that his hand squeezed the phone so hard that it turned into several pieces of metal, Jason couldn't believe that he was being bullied so easily. After the main character hung up, he turned to Alice and asked how she thought nothing bad would happen if he did this to him. Alice replied that this was just a violation of the employment contract, but Jim was ready to pay him a year's salary because this money was small change for him. Suddenly, Jim grabbed the girl by the waist and pressed her tightly to him. He still had one more thing to do, which concerned exclusively Alice. Moving closer, Jim told the girl in her ear that from that moment on, she was also fired. The partner did not expect to hear this. She looked in shock and asked how the girl could be fired. Jim replied that he had recently learned that she was not Alice. Despite the fact that she followed all his orders, she expressed doubts about his methods, while the real Alice did not act like that. Jim added that the girl never liked it when he touched her, but today she just tolerated it silently. Jim's facts put everything into perspective, and the girl could no longer hide it any longer. Her movement and fighting abilities were indeed better than the real Alice. The main character scratched his head in surprise, and was surprised that it turned out that his fighting abilities were better. How could this be? The girl was slightly upset, because the guy didn't even notice it. The main character added that her nose was two centimeters smaller than the real Alice's. Apparently, the girl had no malicious intent. So where is Jim's real partner? The girl replied that he should not know the whereabouts of her sister. She offered to continue enjoying the life of a stupid rich man and slowly dissipated in space. Jim barely had time to shout wait when the girl simply disappeared. His sweet Alice was no longer around and so much good and cheap labor was gone at that very second. The guy was glad that two of the three had disappeared and now he could safely receive the coveted reward. As soon as Jim opened his system, the unknown error remained. He could not believe his eyes, because his former colleague in the store was also the wrong one. The main character began to remember that Anna never had problems in her studies. She never had any difficulties when playing sports. The girl had a very good appetite and ate a lot in the dining room. There was nothing suspicious at home either. It seems that she has no problems identifying her identity. Is there really an error in the system? The guy was a little upset, but in the end he decided to first go to the company where he was the boss and invite everyone to make a proposal. When the main character approached the company headquarters, someone always shouted for the alliance. Did something happen again this time? When the doors of the building opened in front of Jim, young beauties lined up exactly in a line and greeted President Jim in a friendly manner. The main character was in seventh heaven, because when he saw these girls, his X-ray vision examined every underwear on the girl. Jim thought that it would be nice to have such company, and even better to have such vision. Suddenly, Jim shouted sharply that he had seen one of the sets of underwear a large number of times, namely with a bear cub. Among the crowd of girls was Anna, who was the most responsible among them. She had been expecting Jim since the morning. The guy was very confused by this. He thought that something was wrong here because he had been watching her all day and she could not come so early. The main character approached Anya and praised her for how great she showed herself in the swimming lesson. The girl was amused by this and she replied that she did not have swimming lessons in the morning. Perhaps he was mistaken. Jim replied that he most likely made a mistake. The guy thought that the girl was pretending and that he should continue to ask. The guy remembered that in the morning he invited her to have lunch with spicy tofu with coriander and suggested that she go. The girl laughed loudly and asked her boss to stop joking because he was inviting her to pumpkin cookies. Anna happily told Jim the news that there were several more contracts for the sale of wigs that needed his signature and needed to be signed as soon as possible. The main character thanked the girl for the work done and asked her to continue in the same spirit and not stop there. At that moment, Jim realized that there were two Anna girls in this world. Sitting in his office, he told Miss Gray that there were two girls, but she could not understand what it all meant. Jim suggested finding a way for these girls to tell him everything themselves. The girl could not believe this truth, but the guy was so persistent and confident that he knew that the trap would soon slam shut. Sitting at a table in a cafe, Anna's two girls began to suspect that Jim knew everything. 
One of the girls asked why they shouldn't confess, but the other had the last trump card up her sleeve. The main character was lying in bed and sweetly dreaming when suddenly someone knocked on the door. When the guy got out of bed, he couldn't understand who was knocking on the door. When he looked through the peephole, he found no one. He found this very strange. As soon as he took a few steps towards the bed, there was a loud knock on the door again. Then the guy shouted who was doing this. Coming out of the apartment, there was no one around again. Jim was alone in the huge corridor. Suddenly, the silhouette of a girl with long hair and eyes that burned like a bright light appeared in front of the main character. It moved so quickly in the girl's body that a voice that Jim had made a mistake whispered quietly behind him. When the main character turned sharply, he saw no one. The voice that whispered to him suddenly disappeared. The guy went out into the corridor again and didn't see anyone there. Maybe it was a hallucination and went on to sleep. Early in the morning, Jim sat at his desk and listened attentively to the lecture. The night was so strange that he desperately wanted to sleep. Suddenly, a woman's hand tapped him on the shoulder. When the main character turned around, Anna was sitting next to him, who asked if everything was okay and if he had gotten enough sleep today. Jim didn't know how to describe the situation that happened to him at night. Anna found out that at night the main character encountered a ghost. She said that the main symptom of people who stumble upon ghosts is a misconception of time. They tend to see strange things. For example, they do not recognize people. Jim immediately interrupted the girl and added that you can see two identical ones. Anna assumed that Jim really encountered a ghost. She hoped that the main character would simply say that this meeting with a ghost and he would get away with it because it was her proven one. But the guy simply shook his head and asked what kind of relationship Anna had with her sister. The girl pretended that she didn't understand what Jim was talking about and looked at him in surprise. Then the guy admitted that yesterday he saw them dressing up as ghosts, but they were in underwear with a picture of a cat. Anna screamed loudly how could he say such a thing and abruptly covered her body with her hands. Then the guy added that their ghost clothes were torn and their wigs had slipped to the side he saw all this. Anna couldn't believe Jim's words because everything that night was done perfectly. The guy saw through their masquerade a long time ago. He knew that she had doubts about him and asked her to trust. Then the girl told the main character that he better not interfere in this, otherwise sooner or later all his close people will die. The guy couldn't believe Anna's words. He looked at her in surprise and didn't know what to answer. The next day, Jim was in a chair inside the company office and thought about Anna's words, about the secret from which he could die. Two girls stood in front of him, thanked him for helping, but it was time for them to go. When the sisters were about to leave, Jim, sitting in his chair, shouted after them about the James family. The girls were shocked by what they heard and stood in place. Then one of the sisters asked how the guy knew about the James family. The main character suggested that the girls take their time and first of all try cola from 1982 and then talk. After the girls agreed to sit down at the table, he said that the James family was a vassal of the Smith family. The Smith family was one of the four legendary families of China. Although the family was only ranked third among them all, it was still the strongest culturally. Today, all masters in the arts of music, chess, calligraphy, and painting are associated with this family. Jim asked if it was true that the James family was the same family that sent musical talent to the Smith family. One of the sisters exclaimed that they were so poor that they could not possibly be from a large family. Then Jim asked to pay attention to the hands and that they could not deceive. One of the sisters asked the main character if he really checked their fingerprints. But that was far from the case, because Jim meant that calluses on his hands would prevent him from lying. Then the guy took the hands of both girls and said that there were calluses on their hands in characteristic places only one type of person, musicians, could have such calluses. The girl was outraged by this, saying that if this is true, then so what, because the James family is too strong. Jim asked why the girls separated from the family if it was so strong, and why they managed to live separately. Then the sisters shouted in one voice because their father. The girls told the story that they were going to be sent to the Smith house as servants, but their father was categorically against it. The father grabbed the girls and quickly ran away. When the enemies became more and more numerous, he hid the little ones in the car and ordered them to sit quietly. The man was so courageous and brave that he shouted to his enemies to come to him, and he would fight ten at once. The little ones sat in the car and watched this whole picture. 
they shouted why daddy didn't need them anymore. When the girls grew up, they learned the truth that their father died while saving them. The main character was so imbued with this sensual story that he could no longer hold back the tears in his eyes, and they flowed down his cheek like a stream on a warm spring day. The girls added that they cannot let their father down. They need to live well and stay away from the Smith family. The guy asked if they really wanted to take revenge on her. The girls asked Jim not to take risks, because if the Smith family found out about them, their carefree days would end. But the guy still demanded an answer to his question of why they didn't want to take revenge. Both girls shook their heads and replied that dealing with this family was quite problematic. Then Jim heroically shouted that he would always overcome difficulties, and if there were none, he would create and overcome them. The main character offered his help. Was the main character really ready to fight alone? Jim replied that he would not fight alone. He would simply give the order. One day at the Smith Music School, a man in a formal suit ran up to the director and asked what happened. A girl in a beautiful dress and with gorgeous hair was sitting in the room. She invited the teacher to drink tea. The man shouted that some unknown person was putting on a show. The girl asked the teacher not to panic. As soon as she finished her tea, she would come right away. Jim was on the ground floor of the main building and asked to call the school director to talk to someone more senior. One of the teachers told the guy that if he wanted to see the director, he would have to talk to him first. He added that he is the best clarinetist in the world and the man is ready to compete. This situation did not take the main character by surprise, and he ordered his partner to get down to business. The man looked at his opponent and wondered if he could really compare with him. Then Jim exclaimed in surprise, Is it really necessary to look good to play a musical instrument? Otherwise, why doesn't he tell him that the main character is musically gifted? The man confidently replied that he didn't care and had nothing to talk about, and simply began playing a delightful melody. Several people who were in the hall and heard this beautiful melody admired him. He was a real master of the matter. His melody brought people to tears. The main character emphasized that the master really plays well. His emotional performance is especially rich. After completing the melody, the musician added that the clarinet has a wide range of almost four octaves and is a champion of the class of wind instruments. No one can play better than him. The main character smiled and asked if this is not the same as just playing on feelings and ordered his partner to start a melody. The guy took as much air into his lungs as possible and began to perform his mournful melody. In the world of music, he would be a hooligan. The man admitted defeat in this competition because this melody brought everyone to tears. The man added that he would not always be able to win with the help of such a trick. The teacher turned away and left. Then the main character shouted that he wanted to play with ten and who would be next. Suddenly, the eldest granddaughter of the Smith family, Principal Jess, appeared in front of him. The girl kindly asked the guy if it was he who so bravely challenged the entire Smith family. The main character became incredibly interested as he saw an excellent body in front of him and tried to turn on X-ray vision. At one point, the girl's eyes turned red and she offered to read only a poem. When the girl began to read the first sentence, Red scarlet blood poured out of Jim's nose with a strong pressure. After the girl finished reading the sentence, the main character was already on the floor, and a large puddle of blood had spread under him. When Jim opened his eyes, his head was directly on Jess's lap, and his whole body still remained motionless and lay on the floor. After the guy felt better, the girl asked how he was feeling. The guy jumped up sharply and said that he never thought that he would fall for this and wiped the blood from his nose with his fist. The main character turned to his partner and said that the only way to deal with her was to get a secret weapon. The guy put on sunglasses and said the secret phrase camp feed fast beam. The partner immediately understood what was going on and went. Jim turned to the director Jess and said that he saw that she was a person with a big heart and would not demand an explanation for his mistake. The girl smiled modestly and replied that of course she wouldn't, and asked to say what the next competition would be. The main character replied that the wind instrument competition was over and the next stage was strings and percussion. The girl did not want to compete with this type of instrument, otherwise Jim would win the competition. Suddenly Jess suggested that Jim play something else, just her and him. Jim shouted loudly why she thought he was one of these. The main character asked what the rules of the game were, to which Jess smiled sweetly and replied that she liked his approach more and more.
The girl smiled sweetly and stroked the guy on the cheek. She said that the preparation would take only one day, and they would both play the instrument. This was a fair and honest decision. At the end of the conditions, the girl added that the loser will do whatever the winner wants. Jim accepted the conditions, and at that very second, the girl passionately kissed him right on the lips. The guy was surprised by such a bold move from the girl, because it was her promised kiss. The main character thought, why don't they kiss for a few more minutes, because these moments were wonderful. The girl smiled sweetly in response and said that she was looking forward to the performance against Jim. One of Jim's drummers approached him and warned him that she was a real witch who could take away human souls. And besides, no one saw exactly what she played. The main character decided to involve the James sisters in this case. Otherwise, it would not be revenge. When the drummers heard this, they were very surprised because the sisters also don't know how to play. The next day, a huge crowd of people gathered in the central square. Jim's bus and the Smith family's car were in the center of the square. The girl got out of the car in a chic red dress. Her hair flowed in the wind, and the smell of victory wafted from her. Opposite her, not far from the bus, stood Jim in an ordinary T-shirt and sweater. He still had plugs in his nose to prevent bleeding. Finally, this day has come. The rivals met face to face. Perhaps today the most dangerous moment in Jim's life has come. When little Chris got off the bus, she was afraid of what kind of spark she was watching. Jim decided that it was a spark that ran between them, but now he observes it on his index finger. At one point, the main character came to the realization that what he was looking for was really real, and he couldn't do anything about it. When Jess saw the spark from the guy, she smiled sweetly and said that it was because her instrument was electric. This was a big surprise for the guy because he believed that she would play the organ or conduct. Then Jim began to list all the instruments that this witch could have, a synthesizer, an electric guitar, electronic drums. The girl loudly clapped her hands several times and ordered the boys to bring her instrument. When her charges brought in the instrument, it was covered with a huge black cape. Jim never expected the electrical element to be so healthy and impressive. The girl looked at the guy and said that today, he would not become anything more than just a brother for her because she felt the taste of victory. Jess proudly and loudly said that in front of them was her musical instrument. When the servants removed the black cape from the instrument, everyone saw that there was a Tesla coil under it. In surprise, Jim opened his mouth so wide that for some time he simply could not close it because he could not have predicted such force. The girl came closer to the instrument and told Jim to look carefully. With a slight movement of her hand, Jess formed bright sparks on her fingertips, and the time for the show was just beginning. A few seconds later, numerous lightning and sparks formed around the girl, which, thanks to interaction with the girl, created a musical masterpiece. People who were lucky enough to hear this music were amazed, because it was like nothing else. The static effect made Jim's hair stand on end. He nodded his head and replied that the music was really cool. The girl was pleased that the guy was able to appreciate her music, because it seemed to her that he didn't care. Jim, on the contrary, said that it was the first time he heard such real and professional electric music. The protagonist added that by relying only on a small iron cage to isolate the electric field, she was still able to control the sound, and he would never be able to. Thirdly, Jess's beauty was completely natural in the electric current, and this amazed Jim. The girl was flattered by such great attention and pleasant words from Jim. She decided that victory was already hers— and the guy from now on would have to do everything she said. But the main character was not ready to give up so quickly and early. He stood up abruptly and replied that he would not admit defeat because the competition had just begun. After these words, the crowd of people began to be loudly indignant. They did not believe that there was music that could be more powerful than this, and if there was such a thing, then let the guy show it. At one point, Jim began to climb the ladder straight to the top of the Tesla coil, he picked up the phone, called someone, and told them to start. When the guy got to the top, he addressed the crowd saying that this performance had just convinced him even more of what music is. Jim turned sharply to the girl and said that this vibration and he would use one way of the James family to pay respect to their family. Jess asked in surprise if music was vibration. Unexpectedly for all the people in Jim's team, something strong and powerful began. The girl's security surrounded her and asked her to leave this place. It seemed to them that a small earthquake had started here. 
Jim stood proudly and confidently on top of the Tesla coil and shouted that it was not an earthquake. In fact, everything that was happening around now was the music of the main character. With one movement of his hand, Jim pointed to a building that was located not far from the square. With the second, he confidently pointed to the stadium, which was very close. The girl noticed this, and she couldn't believe her eyes. It seemed unreal to her. Jim's musicianship was not very good. He had little understanding of rhythm and had never learned music theory. But all Jim had was money, and all these buildings were his tools. After the incredible performance, Jim began to walk down the stairs and asked the James sisters to come out to him. He hugged them and told them that thanks to the girls who study architecture, he calculated the vibration speed of each building and the sound they can make. After this, he used modern vibrators to turn the frequency to vibrate the sound. He further added that people performing music control instruments, but he allowed instruments to control people. Jim took the girls by the hands and joyfully exclaimed that no one in the world would be able to repeat this listening to music between instruments. The main character turned to Jess and asked what she now thinks about this. The girl began to cry and replied that she was experiencing severe sweating and incredibly pleasant sensations, but at the same time the feeling of sadness did not go away. Jim asked why the girl was so sad. Was it really because of her loss? Jess replied that of course she lost, but how after she heard Jim's music, she couldn't listen to anything else. The girl abruptly rushed into Jim's arms and said that from now on, he must take full responsibility. Little Chris watched this picture and began to boil a little, because it was unpleasant for her to watch this. Jim asked the girl to do him a favor. The guy asked to return the girls to the family so that they could regain their identity and honor. The girl looked into Jim's eyes and replied that she promised him, but would like to ask him for a favor too. After these words, something seemed to paralyze Jim throughout his whole body. Some kind of electric charge passed from head to toe, which left the guy unconscious. The girl ordered the guards to take him to the family mansion in order to sign an agreement with him. When Jim woke up and opened his eyes, he was half naked and lying in bed. When he stood up, someone's hand touched his shoulder and a woman's voice said that yesterday Jim called her sweetie. Turning his head back in bed, he saw Jess, who was looking at him with loving eyes and asked if everything was not by mutual consent. Jim looked sharply under the blanket and immediately understood everything. He could not believe that this had happened to him. In the morning, the guy's girlfriends noticed that he had not been seen since yesterday, and they were worried that something might have happened to him. The sisters replied that most likely everything was fine with him because he still didn't have what Jess needed. But little Chris exclaimed that they could play different role-playing games with him. One of the sisters laughed and said what was she thinking, even though Jim is handsome, he's not that handsome. The second sister shouted that they had better think about how to get rid of their problems. At that moment, Jess came up to them and said that they had misunderstood everything, and she didn't want to create problems for them. Little Chris screamed for the girl to let her go because she wanted to go to Jim. Suddenly, the main character appeared in front of her, who was morally broken and looked at the girl without emotion. The little girl asked what was wrong with him. Did they really torture him or worse, torture him? The guy replied that everything was fine and there was no reason to worry. He was fine. Then Jess turned to everyone and said since everyone was here, she suggested discussing several issues of the James family. The girl turned to her sisters and expressed a great desire to cooperate with them. Then Anna's sisters shouted that her family's affairs did not concern them, and moreover, they did not want to cooperate with her. At this point, Jess added that they had not forgotten about who helped them hide the secret. The sisters became wary. The girl took them by the hand and asked if they had really forgotten how fun and fervently they spent time together. Jess said that even though she changed her name, she is still their cousin. Jim added that he had seen the evidence and that the girl was indeed telling the truth. Jess hugged her little ones tightly and said that no matter how much they had been through over the years, it would all be over soon. She said she found a way to take back control of the Smith family. Little Chris screamed that she was lying, and if she really had a way, then why should she cooperate with them? Then the girl came up to Jim, hugged his hand tightly, and replied that this time he was helping her. The little girl's eyes turned into several bright flames. She was furious at the words she heard. Jess turned to her sisters and said that the head of the family was now discussing a business plan. She took out a notepad and added that this time the girl should take advantage of it. The girls couldn't believe what they saw. They looked at Jess in surprise and didn't know what to answer. 
The girl opened a special notebook with a pedigree and showed that their names were written in the book, and from that moment they returned to the family. Jim hugged the sisters and said that they urgently needed to remove the head of the family. Jess agreed with the main character's words and added that she has a grander plan later. She decided to turn the entire Smith family upside down. Little Chris exclaimed that this was the third most authoritative family in the entire city and how she was going to do this. Jim shouted that they could handle it and everything should work out because they were a team. The main character thought to himself that at first he wanted to be a secret agent, but now he can fight with their help. Jess said that the day after tomorrow they need to see each other at the house and discuss everything together. And the guy abruptly interrupted her words by saying that he had other things to do later and now. Jim's main concern now was to collect the reward for the task. The guy looked carefully at his system and saw that two awards were ready, and now he could easily help solve the problems. But before he starts helping, he first uses new skills. The next day, Jim met Jason right in the coffee shop. This was their first offline duel. The guy turned to his opponent and offered to immediately solve all the problems that existed between them. Jason was amused and said that Jim surprised him, but he would never beat a man who came straight out of hell. Suddenly the guy's hands turned into a bright fire. He decided to immediately demonstrate his technique to Jim and was not going to hide all his skills. The guy shouted for the main character to come up to him, and now he would introduce him to the most ancient, striking technique of his family. Jim was happy about this because now he can view all the properties that his opponent has. The main character carefully studied each property and now he begins his insidious plan to change them. At one point it seemed to Jason that a hidden attack was taking place and someone threw a mug of cappuccino at him and it immediately broke on the floor right under his feet. But no attack followed because it was an ordinary waiter who accidentally knocked over a cup of coffee from a tray. The guy again shouted angrily at whose hands this was. His fist turned into two large, red-hot balls of flame. Then Jason went to Jim and somehow accidentally stepped on that cup of spilled cappuccino and fell right at the feet of the main character. The guy was very amused by this because he screwed up Jason's luck. Jim's rival was the most powerful warrior of the underworld, who was called the Dragon. When the guy was a child, his father constantly took him everywhere on business. Together with their father, they defeated almost all the families in the city. Between them, they could beat ten. Thanks to these meetings, the guy very quickly learned many techniques from various families in the city. He learned absolutely everything, hand techniques, knife techniques, weapons, sword techniques, nunchuck. Jason once even learned one family's ancient eye technique by sitting in front of car headlights for an entire day. And now, with the help of this technique, he could unravel secrets, but of all the fist techniques, the techniques of the teacher's family and Mia were the strongest. At that moment in the coffee shop, he couldn't believe it because he was using the most powerful technique. In the next building, right from the window, Mia watched the fight between Jim and Jason and could not believe that the guy was able to withstand their family's fist technique. The main character's opponent shouted why he couldn't defeat him. Jim mysteriously began to twirl his hands in front of Jason and said that it was all because he had planned it in advance. Then Jason decided to show the guy another ancient technique of the most powerful blow. This power was called Super Dragon Power, Dragon Family Technique, Heavenly Dragon Spirit. The girl who was watching them directly from the binoculars suddenly dropped them because the guy showed his true power. Jim was very surprised by this. He couldn't believe that the guy could do this. All his properties suddenly changed to the maximum. Jason, with the element of a dragon, attacked the guy and told him to fall to his knees in front of him. Jim could not believe that it was possible to resist changing properties, and at that moment he received a strong blow directly to his body. From such a powerful blow, the main character was thrown back several tens of meters. He lay unconscious right on the floor. The dragon replied that he was very lucky, because this is the most ancient technique, and in the last fifty years he is the first to die from it. After a few tens of seconds, Jim stood up as if nothing had happened, wiped several abrasions on his face and replied that this blow was really strong. Jason couldn't believe his eyes, because the guy withstood the strongest blow. He didn't understand how he could survive and get up after that. When Jim approached his opponent, he said that his round was over and now it was his time. The main character sharply called upon the force, and now his body was covered with bright yellow fire along the outline 
and it was the most gorgeous feeling he had experienced lately. Jason couldn't believe what was happening, because the guy had mastered his family's ancient technique. Jim added that he wasn't familiar with his nickname, Copy Ninja Jim. After these words, Jim unleashed all his anger and malice into a blow and sent his fist straight into his opponent's body. Jason didn't understand how this happened. He flew away from him even further than Jim and asked the guy to tell him how he managed it. Jim abruptly activated daddy mode and replied that if he wanted, he would teach him without any problems. The main character approached his opponent and said that this was all because he used the abilities already in his arsenal. The guy laughed loudly because as it turned out, intelligence is the most important strength. During the attack, the dragon's energy was fed from the surrounding aura. Jim wanted to use a tool called a pocket safe. He decided now was the right time to implement it. Jim liked this technique and gladly took it, and now he will have to save a lot more energy. Jason was sure that the main character was definitely using cheating abilities and was deceiving him. The guy shouted that he would defeat him at any cost and switched to the strongest form of the second-generation dragon. He raised his hands up and called for all the powers of those people who owed him something to be transferred to him. A magical bright blue ball filled with energy suddenly appeared above them and began to descend straight down. Jim was very happy about this and was ready to get this ball right into his hands. Jason screamed loudly that this was the first time he had heard such a stupid request for this and brought down a ball of energy directly on Jim. The guy was sure that the main character would definitely not survive from this ball. But at some point, the ball right in front of Jim's face suddenly disappeared with a snap of his fingers. A system notification popped up above the main character's head that a clot of human energy had been successfully saved. The guy gladly accepted such a generous gift and thanked Jason for sharing with him, and if there was anything else important, he asked to contact him. As soon as the guy left the coffee shop, a new task for the all-in system suddenly popped up. The system notified the main character that the master's task had been unlocked. The conditions were to obtain true energy. The reward for completion was that the guy would become an expert in the secret arts. Jim gladly accepted this task. The main character needed to create a fighting technique in three days, if not completed, all chakras would be disrupted. Before Jim had time to think about the techniques, the phone rang. Sister Anna said that the family had discovered Jess and kidnapped her. The main character told the girls to calm down and asked if they were okay. They replied that they were fine and that she was caught because of them as she was about to leave. Jim ordered the sisters to hide and he would deal with this on his own. Not far from Jim, there was a homeless man who was begging for alms from passers-by. The main character had no help this time, so he had to pull out his last trump cards. He took out several huge wads of money and placed them right at the feet of a homeless man with a request to search the entire city. It was one of the homeless gangs of the whole city that understood Jim's instructions and got to work. Homeless people, like ants, began to run all over the city and show a photograph of the missing person. One after another, they passed on information. This method worked so well that after a few hours, a whole chain of people from different neighborhoods and areas were aware of the missing girl. At this time, in the port of the city, two men brought Jess with her eyes closed to the owner. One of the homeless men recognized the girl from the photo and guessed that the whole city was looking for her. While Jim sat waiting for any information, one of the men kindly treated him to a chicken leg that had just been removed from the spit on the fire. The guy sat together and enjoyed the insane taste of fried chicken. The guy said that he made everything according to an ancient family recipe. Suddenly the phone rang, the man quickly picked up and asked what he needed. The homeless man gladly told Jim that the girl he was looking for had been found and was in the secret base of one family. The main character was very happy about this news and ordered to act according to the plan. Jim, finishing the delicious chicken, said that they should show them how cool they are. They are really cool and will show who they are. Midnight came. The port where the girl was was very well guarded from unauthorized persons. Suddenly, a homeless man appeared and turned to the guard saying that he missed him very much and would they like to share a bottle of beer together. One of the guards exclaimed that this sick drunk came up to them and ordered him to get lost. But the man refused to leave and, on the contrary, came closer to the guards. At that moment, the homeless man unleashed all his superhero strength and everything that was in his stomach suddenly appeared on the face of the guard. The man began to run away in horror and flew straight into the container, 
while another guard pointed a gun directly at the homeless man. When the man wanted to shoot, there were several chicken bones in his barrel, which blocked the exit of the bullet. It was one of the street gang's most secret weapons, the famous chicken bones. At this time, Jess was in one dark room, blindfolded and hands on a chair, with a wild desire to drink at least a sip of water. One of the gang's men approached her with a bottle of water and offered to fulfill any of her requests. After all, it was a huge gift for the Smith family. The girl was surprised that she was a gift for this family and added that they were just pathetic slaves of money. The man laughed loudly. He liked the way she spoke and began to build the heroine of the drama. At that moment, the doors of the building opened and the silhouette of a man appeared right in front of them, who said that everything was fine and if they wanted to ask why. There was a guy in a red cloak right in front of them and he came to pick up Jess. Despite being blindfolded, the girl recognized Jim's voice and whether it was him who screamed. The man ordered his subordinates to remove this brat so that he would not get in the way again. Jim was not very surprised that the opponents were armed with machine guns, so he prepared a large portion of calcium for them. Literally a few seconds were enough for the main character to deal with his enemies. Jim was upset by the fact that no one even managed to fight with him. A bunch of soldiers lay neatly not far from the guy's feet. At one point, Jim's team of homeless people rushed into the room and prepared to take away everything they could take away, namely clothes, which now belonged to them. One of the gang leaders decided to show the guy his invincible strength. Jim really liked the color of the body outline of the powerful force and was looking forward to the attack. And then a few seconds later, two powerful fists met each other. The man could not understand what was happening to him because this attack was not so weak, but Jim continued to remain on his feet. After the blow, the main character smiled and said that he had changed all the properties of the man, and now he had become a weakling in all respects. Suddenly, a silhouette of a man appeared from behind, returned with a report, and began to defend the boss. Jim wanted to stop the man, and to do this, he decided to view and change the properties of the new opponent. The main character was surprised, because the system could not deceive him, but for some reason he could not influence the characteristics in any way. Usually a guy could always recognize the properties of any person, but is it really not a person in front of him, but someone else? Jim couldn't believe his eyes when a man ran past him. A thin, blonde woman's hair fell into his hand. Hidden behind this masquerade in a dark cloak and hat was Alice's former partner. The girl quickly tore off her mask and screamed that from now on she was no longer human. When the main character opened the system menu, he still could not believe that the system could make mistakes. The guy carefully began to study all the characteristics and saw that the third rule of properties is that the overall score of properties cannot be changed. The next property rule stated that property settings do not change during inactivity. And the last law said the following, it is possible to view the properties of any person. Jim was initially confused about what happened to the twins and their story, but now he can no longer use his partner Alice. The guy reasoned that the girl is now not a person, and all this looks like one strange plot from any movie. Suddenly, one of the homeless men approached the main character and asked how to deal with him. The young guy looked to the side, where the naked and tied men were sitting quietly and shaking. He allowed them to do whatever they wanted. He just asked them to leave their panties and be civilized. When Jim finished with the enemies, he went into another room and freed his girlfriend Jess. She was shocked that the guy found her so quickly. The main character pointed to a group of homeless people and said that if not for them, the search could have lasted much longer. The girl smiled sweetly and said that now they could let off steam thanks to Jim. Jess told everyone that she had learned about the heiress of one of the important families. The guy was flattered by such politeness on the part of the girl because he is an ordinary rude man and will somehow invite her to dinner. Jess said that their gang is trying to ruin all the plans of this family. The guy was surprised that the girl knew so much about this gang and looked at her in surprise. Then the girl told about this gang that they work in restaurants undercover to collect information from people. The main character was surprised that, in fact, what was standing in front of him was not an ordinary homeless man, but one of the leaders of a restaurant gang. The girl asked the guy not to be modest because, after all, she came to him and he wants it. The man replied that he was very glad to meet you but was very tired of it so he would go about his business. Jess shouted back that he really didn't want revenge. But the girl's words did not stop the guy, and he continued on his way, 
saying that she had thought too much of unnecessary things. The girl added that the man would really forgive his family for breaking his legs and throwing him out of the house, that he never thought about returning the things that belonged to him. The main character was surprised, because he did not know that the old man was from a rich family. But the man asked the girl to stop putting pressure on him, but had long since said that he had nothing to do with the family. Jess understood everything, because in every family there is a victim of the behind-the-scenes struggle. The man asked for the last time why she said that. If he could destroy the family, he had already done it himself a long time ago. The girl said hopefully that she used to think that there was no hope until she met Jim. The man objected, but what does this guy have to do with it, and looked in his direction without much enthusiasm. But Jess quietly said that he had a lot of money, after which Jim could not stand it and shouted that he had a lot of money. One sunny morning, all representatives of the Miller family gathered in a beautiful and spacious meeting room. A man dressed as a butler asked the gentleman that the musicians from the Miller family were ready for the next year and when he would need them. A very young guy sat in a chair, dressed in expensive clothes with a stylish hairstyle, and he absolutely didn't care who was going where. The man asked again, Maybe he would decide better. After all, the Smith family is authoritative in this matter. But the guy was so busy playing with his mobile phone that he simply didn't notice him and asked him not to make noise nearby. One of the men, who was the third headman of the Miller family, listened to everything carefully and decided to leave the hall. But the man ordered him to stay where he was because they had not yet finished speaking. But the man in the suit objected because the Miller family still does not have the right to vote and there is no difference. The man was surprised how he could talk like that because his master was nearby. At that moment, the young gentleman was indeed next to them, but he was of little interest in this dialogue and continued to go about his business. Seeing all this, the man grinned and said that they didn't care about them at all, and that in his hands the Miller family would be instantly destroyed. But then the man objected, saying that he really wanted to betray him as well as other family members, for such words, the man received a juicy slap in the face with such force that a handprint remained right on his cheek. Suddenly, the guy jumped out of his chair and asked not to make a fuss, because he almost won the game, but in the end he ran into three players. The young man turned to the old man and ordered him to identify these three people. The old man, with a juicy slap on his face, tried to remind them that they were now discussing the important matter of families. But the young guy was persistent and ordered these three people to be brought to him again. His father would pay for them whatever he asked. As soon as the conversation turned to money, the old man became very happy and forgot why they were gathering here and simply asked to remember their names. One is called why he wears his clothes, the second is called his brother, and the last is called Jim. The old man was surprised by the last name because it seemed very familiar to him, and he ordered to quickly find it. It seemed to the man that he was from some rich family. The guy was very unhappy that they dared to bypass him and he was looking forward to being found. But at that moment, someone's voices were heard. Someone opened the doors and shouted that there was no need to look for them. Standing right in front of them were the very people the young guy needed right now. Why are you wearing his clothes? It was Jess. Jim, as always, was wearing his favorite dark glasses and introduced himself to everyone. And the last one was the man who was called his brother because his father is actually the homeless man's younger brother. Jim quickly approached the guy and threatened him that he would kill him if he decided to interfere with him because he had an excellent team. And while Jim walks the street and enjoys life, he may not even hope for success. The old man was furious and furious. He loudly slammed his hand on the table and shouted that this was impudence because Jim and Jess wanted to steal the company. The main character suddenly turned his innocent eyes and replied that he was forced to. Jess joined the dialogue and asked her brother how he dared talk to his sister's husband like that. The old man was furious at this situation. At that moment, the man received a second slap in the face from the young guy. He asked him how he dared to talk to members of his family. The boy added that he should forget about all the money for the next year. Then the man knelt down and began to beg the master not to do this because without his support, his family would not survive. Then his sister suddenly wondered if their family could not survive without being humiliated in front of the Smith family. The man looked at the couple and said that they were very impudent and ordered Jess to be arrested. Jim added that if the Smith family does not give money, then other people will give the money. 
The boy from this family grinned and wondered if he could really find as much money as his family could give. Then the main character opened his jacket and showed a huge clip of money and added that he already had it. The man was surprised by the amount of money the guy had and asked if he really wanted to buy the Miller Family Company. Jim immediately said that he was not going to buy the company because the Miller family had always tried to raise sophisticated classical musicians. But people don't like this anymore, so the family feeds only by flattery towards the audience. After that, the guy looked at Jess and said that she thinks differently. Then Jim threw his hands up and loudly shouted that this is a completely different era, the era of idols. The guy shared his plan. They are a music company that wants to bring back idols, so they need to hire people who can do everything, versatile artists. They will make money with a very large mass of people. The popularity of this will be much higher. Everyone who heard the main character was perplexed and understood little about what the main character was trying to convey to them. But one of the men who was sitting in the hall loudly clapped his hands for this plan and said that this was a good idea. This would be the vector of development of the Miller family. The members of the meeting began to talk sharply among themselves. They thought that the plan was really good, and they could reconfigure the equipment to the required level. But the man was categorically against it, because this bunch of poor people didn't know how to make money. Then Jim asked with contempt whether he really wanted the Miller family to earn money only from the Smith family. When the guy heard this, he was indignant. Is his money really not needed anymore? The man tried to explain that this was not true and that was not what he wanted to say. Then Jess suggested holding a council right away and settling everything once and for all. The young guy exclaimed, Does everyone really want to turn their backs on his family? Then Jim came up to him and patted him on the shoulder, saying that they didn't want to. They had already turned their backs on the family. At that same second, Jim's team quickly escorted the young gentleman out of the hall. The man did not understand what to do at this moment, and he simply shouted after the gentleman. Later, his sister came up to him and said that now Smith would not disturb them. Jim was delighted with everything that was happening around him, and with a smile on his face, shouted that work needed to begin. When everyone sat down at the negotiating table again, the man turned to the main character and said that he had really decided to start something of his own with this insignificant plan. The man saw some kind of plan in this, saying that everyone now wants to become idols. But they have certain resources, and wouldn't it be better to do business with the support of the Smith family? He expected such a move from the old man, and invited him to organize a competition to see whose idol would be more successful. Then the man asked his colleague to bring him a list of the selected programs for this month. Together with Jim, they chose one of the programs, and whose idol will be in the spotlight will take over the leadership of the company. The program that the men chose was called Idol Savior 110. Jin agreed with this and said that tomorrow the qualifying stage will begin where they will find a male idol. When the couple left the meeting room, the man immediately asked to inform the Smith family about this. He suggested that they choose the most popular artist. The old man immediately began listing which teachers should be trained and in which disciplines, primarily a music teacher, a dance teacher, a rap teacher, and a basketball coach. One of the subordinates was surprised whether the ability to play basketball is really so important. After these words, the man kicked the assistant and ordered him to do as he said. At this time, a couple in love was traveling on a bus around the city and wondering what they should do because they did not have any male artists. Then Jim came up with a brilliant idea. He had one such participant in mind that would suit him. An old acquaintance of the main character, Arthur, was sitting calmly in a soft chair, and suddenly he had a bad feeling. A few seconds later, his phone rang. It was his father. The boy was happy about the call and asked his dad if he really wanted to send him some pocket money. The father's words shocked the guy, and he could not believe that the company wanted to open ten branches and make him the main manager. Arthur was not against this idea, but where did his family get so much money to open branches? The father delighted his son by saying that now they had an investor and they had just signed a contract and he had paid off all the debts. The man poured a cup of tea and said that his son agreed and asked if they could move on to the next stage of the agreement. Opposite his father was Jim, who sat imposingly in a comfortable chair and said that they could move on to another stage. The guy handed over a huge bag of money and said that it was all theirs and he didn't care how they used it. They might even go to a loss. The main thing was to make a pop star. 
The next day, Arthur could not believe this event because today he became the boss and he was wondering how luxurious the new branch would be. As soon as the guy approached the branch, he was suddenly surprised and screamed. After all, inside this building there was absolutely nothing, complete wilderness and emptiness. This made the boy angry, and he decided to tell his father about this so that he would change the location of the branch. At that moment, suddenly someone's small and beautiful hand tapped Arthur's back and said hello. The guy immediately turned around and couldn't believe his eyes. It was a luxurious and beautiful girl who was standing right in front of him. The girl wanted to ask if he was the director of this restaurant. The guy was very embarrassed by this situation, and he said that this restaurant was really his. The girl squealed with joy that this was true and heard that very good restaurants were opening here from the company of Arthur's father. The little girl couldn't afford to eat at the main restaurant, but now she has the opportunity to eat at this branch. But at one point the girl thought about it, because they had not opened yet and most likely she was too hasty. The guy didn't want to miss this opportunity to get to know the girl better and shouted that they had closed long ago and that she would kindly come in. When the couple went inside the building, there was no one there. Arthur scratched his head and wondered what he should do. The girl asked how long we needed to wait, because her classes would start soon. Then the guy shouted enthusiastically that everything would be fine now. He had seen how others were preparing, and now he would simply try to do everything in his power. But at that moment, someone came into the kitchen room and the guy stood in surprise, holding a frying pan in his hands, and looked in this direction. The little girl was surrounded by a gang of tall and muscular men who did not want to let her go anywhere. The guy noticed these men and thought that they were very scary and evil people and decided to turn away and quietly go back. A little girl noticed this and shouted that the director had really come to save her. The guy tried to act like a gentleman and said that with him she shouldn't be afraid of anything. At one point, the pumped-up men began to attack the guy. They were ready to kick him in the ass. Arthur squealed in fear and shouted that he didn't know who was to blame and let them ask him that. He didn't understand why they needed him. Suddenly, the girl screamed sharply that she had never seen such a strong blow from a guy. When the guy raised his head, he saw a bunch of bandits lying neatly next to each other and was surprised that he could really deal with them. A few seconds later, reporters with a camera burst into the branch building. They had not filmed covertly for a long time and did not think that the young hero could surprise them so much. The little girl was infinitely happy that her Arthur became her idol. He is fair, handsome, and he is also a great cook, and he should become her idol. The guy was hooked by the girl's words. He smiled and said that he was far from all this. On one of the local newspapers, Jim read how his partner did a good deed and material about how a modest restaurant boss heroically saved a girl and destroyed a group of bandits. Jess asked the guy why he decided to make him an idol, because in all respects he lags behind the true participant. But he replied that this is his ace in the hole, because now it's not just any artists who are gaining real popularity, but people like Arthur. The guy already had a picture in his head about how everything would work out if he raised just such a scumbag as Arthur. One day, a young guy decided to try his luck and came to the venue of the Idol Savior event. When the crowd of people saw who had joined them, they abruptly began to talk among themselves about whether this was the young hero who saved the girl. One of the girls shouted that it was definitely him, because he had such a stupid but very cute look and he would make a great idol. The man from the Miller family stood indignantly and was surprised that this particular guy was chosen by Jim. One of the security guards said that he could never have imagined that news about Arthur would overtake in popularity all the sites they bought. The old man was furious because they spent so much money on their first round and in the end it was lost. They decided that they should not underestimate Jim. When the event began, the presenter in a beautiful red suit and with a microphone in his hand came onto the stage and announced that the broadcast of the long-awaited show would soon begin. He announced the first candidate student intern of the Faculty of Culture to appear on stage. The guy sang very wonderfully and his dance moved exactly in time with his song. Fans and judges unconditionally gave him ten points each. The man was pleased with the performance of his contestant because he was gorgeous, he had talent, the audience loved him and they had every chance to win. The second man added that at his request, the judges would give the points they needed. A few minutes later, the host returned to the stage and announced the next participant. Suddenly, Arthur appeared from behind the scenes. 
hesitantly walking to the center of the stage. He was not sure that he had come to the right place. As soon as people saw this guy, they all laughed in unison. They couldn't believe that such a stupid young man came on stage. Arthur decided to perform one of his favorite songs, and as soon as he began to sing into the microphone, his legs began to tremble, and he tripped over one leg and fell right in front of the audience. Seeing all this, the men were sure that he would definitely be kicked out in disgrace. After such a performance, one of the judges decided to speak out, and the host of the show could not refuse such an offer. Jim stood up from the judge's table and shouted that he couldn't watch this anymore. When Arthur saw his classmate at the judge's table, he was surprised. The men couldn't believe what Jim was doing there, because they didn't expect this before the competition stage. They checked all the lists of judges. Only top streamers were there. The main character said that he thought Arthur's performance was not bad, but the previous participant had much better parameters. And Jim sharply pressed the golden button, which gave Arthur a chance to show all his strength in the finale. The guy smiled and asked the crowd if they knew why he did this. All the fans could not believe this outcome of events. They did not understand why this happened and why he used the yellow button. Jim confirmed his words, which gives Arthur the opportunity to move on. His colleagues asked if he wanted to think better. At that moment, someone's hand rose from the crowd. It was the hand of Mr. Miller. He was against such lawlessness. The guy became interested and asked the viewer why he decided to object so much. Then the man said that he could neither sing nor dance and why he was allowed to move on to the finals. The old man added that why didn't he give the same chance to the previous participant in the competition, but only gave it to him. Jim was stumped by such a question and he was confused in front of the viewer and did not know how to answer. But the man did not stop there and asked one question after another. Is he really at the same time with him? And what is his relationship with this Arthur? Another man abruptly took out his phone and shouted that the company that sent Arthur to perform at the competition, one of the judges was a shareholder in it. The presenter, when he heard such accusations, could not stand it and said that he could not have expected that one of the best streamers would turn out to be such a person. Then Mr. Miller went up on stage and approached the judges personally and asked Jim how he would explain this. The main character explained that he just wanted to say why he gave this chance to Arthur. Jim said that everything is simple and elementary, because he is his employee in the company. The man laughed and asked what this all meant, because it turned out that he admitted that he had deceived all the people, and they would soon begin to throw mud at him. The main character continued to stick to his line and added that, in addition, all the artists who are on this stage are his employees. After these words from Jim, each participant lowered his head and said in unison that they confirmed the boss's words. It was difficult for the main character to explain this. After all, all these people work under the leadership of the music company, Jess, and they are official partners of this program. One of the Miller family assistants snapped his fingers and shouted at the judges that they could use the eject button and suggested that Arthur be eliminated. After these words, the judges voted and the votes were two to one. Jim was very upset about this outcome, but added that they should not think that they had won. At that moment, Jess walked up onto the stage and proudly presented a contract for the winner of the competition to sign. The guy happily signed the contract, and Jim thanked the Miller family for providing them with such a talented artist, and now he is part of his company. The main character added that according to the rules of the dispute, they now have no participant, and therefore he won the dispute. One of the assistants did not agree and shouted that it was all a hoax. This guy was really difficult because he had a joker up his sleeve. But the man seemed not against this outcome and, on the contrary, was even a little happy. The main character joyfully exclaimed that from now on they will have to give the place of head of the Miller family directly to Jim. But one of the men shouted that first the guy should pay a fine for terminating the contract. Jim was not at all embarrassed by this situation and he handed over a certain amount for the fine. The assistant was very angry about this because it was the money he used to bribe Jim yesterday. The guy with a smile on his face asked what kind of feeling it was when their fine was paid with the same money and how pleasant it was. Then the master of the Miller family shouted to him to stop immediately. Jim was afraid of him, because even his father never shouted at him as a child. The man picked up the phone and, despite all this performance, said that he would not allow anyone to disgrace his family and added that the guy had finished his game. He dialed Mr. Smith's number and said that he needed it at the moment, 
and that now Jim would see what games rich people were playing. At one point, one of the technical specialists approached the presenter and said something in a whisper. After these words, the presenter abruptly ran onto the stage and announced that due to technical problems, filming had ended and the show was canceled. A satisfied Miller approached Jim and said that thanks to this call, they helped him cancel the show. The man added that it is not money that rules this world. Jim turned away from the gentleman and told him that since he became rich, he realized one very interesting thing. Complete freedom of action lies not in making money, but in spending it. When Jim finished this, he grabbed the curtain with one hand. When the curtain was torn down, a squad of police led by a police officer was standing right behind it. Jim kindly pointed out the Miller family to the police. Police Captain May shouted that they violated the law on trade and bribery of judges, and they also interfered with the process of the show, and they also found connections with illegal groups. A few minutes later, the men were arrested by police. One of the assistants shouted that it was all his fault and that Mr. Miller knew nothing. The main character said that his confession was recorded on a tape recorder, and in fact he outbid a participant in the competition a couple of days ago, and now he just decided to arrange a surprise. The man admitted defeat and said that Jim should no longer hope to cooperate with the channels. In response to these words, Jim silently waved his hand. At one point Arthur approached the guy and asked if it was all because of him. Jim shouted back so that he wouldn't worry and he would do anything for his friend. The guy added that, in addition, this scandal will raise the rating of this show, and cooperation with the channel can always be bought, and the most important thing is that Jim really loved spending money. One day the main character was in the office building and denied that nothing would work for him. Little Chris asked what was happening to Jim today. The guy was looking for a way to find an opponent with whom he could fight. The girl did not quite understand Jim's idea and why he should fight with someone at all. At that moment, the guy shouted that he wanted to defeat the bad guys using the iron fist of justice. But in reality, Jim needed to complete the task of a martial artist, and time was passing so mercilessly. And the main character decided that it was necessary to find someone and hone unique techniques. Since his last meeting with Jim, Jason had been in the hospital. He couldn't wait to be discharged from the hospital and meet him again. As soon as the guy thought about Jim, he immediately appeared behind the glass of the hospital and asked how long he would remain in the hospital bed. The man was so angry with the main character that he shouted at him to leave immediately and not to see him again. On one of the streets, two teenagers were trying to figure out who the girl they both knew really loved. Unexpectedly for them, Jim was in the midst of it. He kindly greeted him and asked if his eyes and ears were correct. Then they were going to fight soon. The guys shouted in one voice that it was none of his business, but Jim added that he just thought why not help him and offer to fight with him specifically if it makes no difference to them. The guys thought that they had stumbled upon another psycho and sharply stepped on the gas from here. Jim shouted that he would even allow them to hit him first. Next, the main character went to the square, where lovely old women constantly gathered. He did not miss the opportunity and invited them to hit the ill-mannered guy. After that, the guy turned to the kids and the one who hits him will get candy. The harder the hit, the more candy they will get. But no one accepted Jim's offer, and he sat hopelessly alone like a martial artist. Suddenly a man appeared in front of the guy, fired into the air and asked if Jim was in front of him. The main character could not understand who was in front of him and kindly asked if they knew each other. The man pointed the gun directly at Jim and replied that the young man could not forget it so quickly. At this moment, the main character was overcome by a strange feeling of deja vu, as if he had already seen him somewhere. The man shouted that his brother was hurt because of the guy. For a second, Jim felt better because he understood why they came for him, but he still didn't know in his heart who he was. Then the man reminded the main character that his brother tried to rob a bank. He saw the news, and that because of Jim it didn't work out for him and now he is forced to be in prison. The main character remembered the robber's eyes and added that he was wearing a mask and therefore does not know what his brother looks like. The man pointed the gun at Jim and shot at him, saying that words were meaningless here and he just wanted him dead. He laughed because that was the end of the brat and the price for heroism in the bank. But Jim, on the contrary, was happy about this situation because he was just looking for such a bad guy and it looks like he just won a ticket to the world of pain and suffering. The main character easily caught a bullet with his hands, which was fired from a pistol from a distance of one meter. The man calmed down a little 
and asked what happened to the guy grabbing bullets with his bare hands. This situation further aroused the man's interest, and he knew that his brother could not lose to a weakling. The man abruptly took the second barrel out of his pocket and shouted that now he would try to catch bullets from two pistols at the same time. The main character got bored with words and shouted to finally take action. Suddenly, a hellish shootout began between the man and the unarmed Jim. Jim saw lead bullets flying straight at him, but he was infinitely happy and grateful for his help, but immediately upset him because it was not enough at all. Jim thanked the criminal, because for such decisive revenge his brother would definitely be proud of him. The main character said that now his time is up and it's the guy's turn. Before Jim had time to finish the last phrase, all that was left of his enemy was his shadow. And at that moment the man was already rushing along the highway on a sports motorcycle, because catching bullets with his bare hands would be a completely crazy idea. The man laughed out loud because fortunately, his fast legs are not afraid of anything. Otherwise, he and his brother would already be sitting together having received from the boy. Suddenly next to him, he heard someone's voice which appreciated the criminal's cool escape style. The man thanked Jim for such generous words and asked how he was able to catch up with him. The guy shouted loudly that thanks to the ancient arts of his family, the flaming wheels were right on their feet. Jim sincerely thanked the man, because thanks to his training he had achieved an epiphany and learned a couple more tricks. And with the help of the bullet that was in his hand, he pierced the motorcycle wheel. Jim managed to stop the man and decided to try a few more tricks. The protagonist summoned the Jim family's ancient sunrise martial arts, and a huge flash of light appeared right in front of him. The flash was so bright that the man grabbed his eyes with his hands and could no longer see anything. Jim thought that it was in vain that he was watching anime fights, because such a trick was of the sort, just don't copy it exactly, so that it won't be discovered. Next, the main character shouted about the spirit of the ethereal and the unity of Jim's family, and immediately numerous fists appeared behind him, ready to attack the enemy. The guy did not stop there and began to use ancient martial arts one after another, starting with the thousand birds of Jim's family, and ending with the charm of family love. The man knew all the pain and anger of the main character's martial arts and asked to quickly hand him over to the police just so that Jim would stop. Thanks to this practice, Jim was pretty tired and couldn't even show the final movement. Unexpectedly, the main character heard a familiar sound. It was the sound of the all-in system, which said that the side mission of the martial artist was completed. In addition to completion status, Jim received additional awards, bronze, silver, and gold. The main character guessed that the more tricks he used, the greater his reward would be. In addition to the gold award, there were also diamond, star, royal, and absolute master awards. All this meant that Jim needed to find a much stronger opponent and hone his fighting skills to the maximum. The guy turned to the enemy and asked that he mentioned about some family and its seven demons, and this could mean that in that family, there were guys worse than him. The next day, Jim and little Chris went to the seven demons of the Wilson family. Their notoriety always preceded them. The main character was happy because today they will go undercover to their residence and deal with everyone at once. Little Chris was very interested in this proposal because she had not been in the underground world for a long time, and these thoughts even gave her goosebumps. At the entrance to the residence, they were immediately met by several leaders. They asked where the couple was going and if they had a ticket to enter a closed club. Jim was outraged by this. He could not understand what kind of tickets we were talking about and why he had to slow down here. The couple did not understand why people immediately began to intimidate them and shouted to stop immediately. Little Chris turned to Jim in a whisper and said that it was the local slang that was slowing down. She asked not to worry about it and she would do everything alone. Jim could not expect such initiative from a little girl and looked forward to what would happen next. The girl screamed that from now on they should listen only to her, and if they are going to put each other above them, then it is better to immediately call their parents so that the adults can talk in private. The guys were surprised at such an impudent treatment and accepted her. One of the men said that the heavenly king wanted to overtake the mountain tiger, which meant that she was so brave and not afraid of the wrath of her ancestors. The girl replied that the river demon could not enter the city pagoda, this slang meant that these ancestors must already be standing on the edge of the cliff to jump into the stormy river before she found them. 
Then the man added that she chirped too beautifully for such a gray chick, which meant a good bluff and that they almost believed her. Then the girl showed her ID and replied that the roots grow into the ground. The deeper the root, the older the tree. These words meant that she was a daughter from a branch of one main clan. All this time, Jim stood on the sidelines and watched as little Chris confidently hung noodles on the ears of these men. Then the man asked how long she had been caring for the tree, which in translation meant what generation of students she was from. Chris answered that to complete a house you need a foundation, and then lay out all the bricks from the first row to the end, which meant that she could not say this until she got to the main hall. Then the man replied that someone had already laid the foundation for her, which meant that she was from the first generation. When little Chris told the man that his insight would always find light in the darkness, which translated was, if he understood who she was, let him accept this gift and let them pass. Suddenly a handsome boy appeared from behind and asked why he was making so much noise on such a beautiful day. The guy came closer to them and introduced himself that his name was Oliver, but they could just call him Ollie. The young people reciprocated and met this young man, saying who they were and where they were from. Ollie asked how the weather was for them here, which in his language meant who sent them here. Jim did not realize that it was a secret code and replied that the weather was really beautiful. There was a light breeze and the sun was not shining. Little Chris warned the guy in a whisper that it was all slang and that next time he should be more careful. The girl took control of the situation and said that the second master of the Wilson family was kind to them and therefore invited them to visit his house. At that moment, Jim showed a suitcase full of bills and added that they were really invited as good guests and they did not come empty-handed. After these words, the guy agreed to kindly lead the guests to the main hall. The guys walked up the stairs and Jim asked Chris in a whisper where she had learned this slang. She told a story about how she lived for some time on Tiger Mountain and learned how to do it there. Well, something was fishy here and the guy Oliver already suspected something. When the guys went up to the main hall, they immediately got down to business and expressed a desire to join their family. The young man was absolutely not against it and happily agreed to such a request. Jim was very surprised by this because how could he talk about such an important matter with such a relaxed expression on his face? But Oliver added that with the amount of money donated, he saw no reason to worry about anything. This answer upset the main character, because he planned that he would be sent, and then he would have fought with every person on this mountain. This made the guy laugh very much, and he suggested going forward like another belligerent fool. Little Chris could not stand such rudeness and shouted that how dare he laugh at them right in the face, because they came to the mountain gates not just for an excursion, but to fight the demons of the Wilson family. Oliver replied that he condemns senseless fights and even more so murders, especially if they are also on the territory of his family's estates. He prefers to solve everything in a civilized manner, walking among the trees in the fresh air. Little Chris was furious at this answer. She did not understand what trees and what air he was talking about because they are the Wilson family, the masters of the underground world of the underground arena and the black market. The guy was hooked by the girl's words because she scolded him with these words. Oliver replied that perhaps this was the case before. He was cruel and very reckless, but now everything was different and demonstrated a reward for his great contribution to the development of the city and free assistance. Jim couldn't believe the guy's words. It reminded him of other family members and what happened to them. But the guy asked not to interfere in their affairs and added that many of his family members had long ago broken off relations with him. After these words, the young man kindly invited the guys to follow him, and it was better to see once than to hear several times from someone. When the guys left the hall and went out into nature, they saw a huge tree among mountain waterfalls and wild nature. The boy Oliver shouted joyfully that there was a cocoa or chocolate tree right in front of them. The young man was very pleased and admired them. He was infinitely happy at the thought of someone investing in them. After that, Oliver took out the Wilson family's cocoa investment agreement and asked him to sign it. Jim began to carefully study the contract and asked if he was rushing too quickly. But the guy replied that, to tell the truth, he didn't have much time and if it weren't for him, someone else would have bought these trees. Jim wondered why anyone would spend so much money to buy a remote garden with cocoa trees who could be so rich as to spend money like that? 
Oliver tried to convince the guy that although these gardens are located far away and not very convenient, they are the best cocoa on the market. Then the guy told a story about how some wanted to buy cocoa orchards, but not in order to extract the beans, but to completely destroy them and use cheap raw materials on the market. The guy's love for cocoa beans was so boundless that he did not want these beautiful trees to disappear forever. Chris told Jim that she always knew that he was a pervert, but she could not expect this, with which the guy could not but agree. Then the main character decided to invest the money he brought as a gift and invest in these gardens. But the guy added that he also suddenly wanted to buy the company that wanted to destroy these gardens and asked Oliver to say the name. The young man replied that as far as he remembers well, the company is called Davis Food. The next day, Jim sat in his office and reasoned that each time Mia created more and more problems and solving them was becoming more and more difficult. He read that she was just an arrogant girl with big ambitions and nothing more. But how the main character was very mistaken and underestimated this enemy. Suddenly, Jess ran into the office and shouted that this was not good. Jim asked what happened and whether the acquisition of the Davis Food subsidiary had failed. The girl said that the purchase went without problems, but as soon as they decided to sign the contract, Jim immediately jumped up and abruptly interrupted her. Had they really increased the price, and if it made absolutely no difference, he said to just pay them. She said they sold the company without any problems without saying a word, but after that something bad happened. Several people from this subsidiary abruptly quit. It was hard for the main character to believe this because he more than doubled the workers' wages. The girl added that not only that, they also asked her to fire them through disciplinary action. The older sister accepted Jim's money, but the family's employees had nothing to do with it. At this moment, the guys immediately realized that all this looked like sabotage through the dismissal of the entire management apparatus. Unexpectedly, Jim received a message on his phone. It was very strange, because at such a time, no one could write to him. When the main character opened his inbox, he saw a photo of Mia and a message where she wrote that she hoped he was now happy. The guy was very interested in this message, and he immediately began to look for the girl using the photo. A few hours later, the main character found the location that was in the message. Jim looked at the photo on the message again and realized that it must be here somewhere. At that moment, suddenly someone's hand touched Jim's shoulder from behind. The guy turned around sharply and shouted about the mighty power of ancient martial arts and the roar of the fire dragon. When Jim turned around, he saw a gorgeous girl with long hair that elegantly fluttered in the wind. Directly in front of him was Mia, who took off her glasses and said that all his ancient martial arts were absolutely useless. The main character couldn't understand why his powers didn't work. Was she really a vessel for storing powers? And where did she go? The girl asked in surprise what the guy was talking about. But Jim asked not to take it to heart and said that these were ordinary thoughts out loud. Then the girl continued that the subsidiary company that he acquired. But the guy immediately interrupted the girl and shouted that now was the time when he was speaking and why she was following him everywhere. Mia was surprised by Jim's words about being stalked because it was she who rushed here based only on the photo and messages. Then the guy replied that she doesn't always take pictures like that and did it on purpose. In response, the girl said that this was all because he was truly the strongest person she had ever known. Jim was touched by this answer, but was this really the reason or maybe she was just secretly in love with him? The girl was very angry about this, and she replied that now whether he likes it or not, they are in the same boat, so it's better for him to become more serious. Mia immediately sharply shouted to everyone to get ready and that the survival game was about to begin. Jim was very surprised at this situation and the girl added that when the familiar landing party arrived on the island, he would beg her for help. Mia said that there are no things in this world that money cannot buy, but she knows at least one and even more. First of all, she mentioned advanced scientific and technological achievements and discoveries in the field of science. She went on to talk about emotions, for example, when people get when watching a game of their favorite team. But at the moment, there is something that can combine these two things into one. And at that moment, the girl revealed a card in front of Jim, which she called a game of survival or an island of despair. Mia began the story by saying that there are no rules in this game, and it was originally a completely ordinary game about scuffles for the amusement of the rich. And the winner received an award, an incredible achievement of scientists in various fields and research in a single copy. 
The girl continued that because of such an award, strict rules were introduced and breaking them could lead to death, but she had been watching the guy for a long time. When the girl looked at Jim, she saw that he was sleeping and sharply screamed for the guy to listen to her carefully. Jim replied that her voice makes him fall asleep very well, because it sounds like the most powerful sleeping pill. The main character asked to rightly note that sleep is very useful and now she can continue. The girl summed up that firstly several teams would participate, and secondly Jim would now be her partner. The guy was not satisfied with this situation and he asked why he and not the other guys. The girl immediately replied that she had already said that she had been watching him for a long time, that Jim knew how to fight and was also able to make decisions. Plus, he was so rich that now he could not be bribed, especially those who were able to help her with this, there really isn't much, so the guy should thank the girl for that. After this phrase, Mia threw her backpack over her shoulders, opened the door of the plane and shouted that now it was time to jump. The girl warned that first they should go to the base to find supplies, but at that moment Jim only thought that this was his first time flying on an airplane. Mia was surprised because she didn't understand how it was possible to fly on an airplane for the first time, having so much money. The girl suddenly grabbed Jim by the collar and jumped straight down with him. As the guy fell straight down, he encountered one small problem. Where is his damn parachute and why is he flying without it? The girl said that according to the rules, groups are limited to only one parachute. But if she is generous, and if Jim calls her mistress, she will share a parachute with him. The guy thought for a while and said that he had another option. Suddenly the girl turned around, but she did not see any parachute on her back and she simply flew down like a stone. At this moment, the protagonist happy with a parachute on his back, said that his portable storage is really convenient to use and how many useful things he can stuff there. The girl was surprised how Jim could steal her parachute so quickly and deftly. The main character smiled, took out his gold card, and added that they are rich people. How can they be called thieves? Jim threw the gold card right behind the girl and said that he just bought it and let her take the money. Mia called the guy a psycho and screamed at him to give her the parachute, and if he didn't pull the ring now, it would be too late. Jim turned over with his back down and asked to call him a great master, and maybe then he would share a parachute with her. There were literally a few hundred meters left, but the guy never heard the cherished words in his direction. The girl screamed that how could he demand such a thing, because she was falling down at breakneck speed, and he still managed to mock her. At that moment, Jim sharply grabbed Mia by the waist and said that he was not such a heartless person, and she could call him a master later. Suddenly, Jim opened his parachute, and the girl added that she believed that the guy was simply afraid to take responsibility for this. When the couple slowly went down, they saw how the same participants in the game were much lower than them. The girl screamed that they had spent too much time. Perhaps someone was already waiting for them downstairs. At this moment, one team of participants in full equipment was already waiting for the other participants right on Earth. They were waiting for the parachute to go down, and as soon as it fell, they quickly noticed it. One of the participants shouted that they were losers and that any delay here was equivalent to death. The man took his crossbow and hit two participants with a precise shot. The guy added that this was the end for them and invited his partner to search them because they needed money. But when the man approached and pulled the parachute off the corpses, he noticed only one piece of clothing. At that moment, Jim killed both players with a sharp blow because they were not qualified enough for this task. When the guy started searching them, he found nothing but weapons. He asked in surprise whether Mia really didn't say that all the participants in this competition were rich people. But the girl had no time for that. She was terribly frozen from the cold and asked first to give her all her clothes. After the couple got dressed, the girl said that she simply forgot to mention that 60% of the participants are petty hooligans and bandits, that here they are called tyrants, and the rich here are called titans, and if the tyrant wins, he will be completely acquitted and given more money. The boy was very upset because he had so much hope in rich people and was counting on this pocket money. Suddenly a shot sounded and the girl screamed cautiously to Jim. The guy smiled and asked if he really needed to be careful with this bullet. The main character really liked that they were worried about him, and Mia's care warmed his soul and heart. The girl said that he had misunderstood everything and showed Jim a small flash on the roof of the building. This time the girl went. She allowed Jim to look at the kung fu technique 
which is head and shoulders above the ancient martial arts. The guy thought that this would be a great opportunity to look at her abilities, because he knows nothing about them. Suddenly, at this moment, the all-in system changed color to gold. Jim began to carefully familiarize himself with the main tasks. There he was required to become a champion of survival competitions and update to the latest version of the system. As a reward, he would receive access to the main mission, the right to select this mission and access to additional side missions. This phrase scared the main character because after so many years, he is using something that is not even a finished product. Jim began to imagine how one of the improvements would give him even more money. At that moment, the girl suddenly grabbed the guy's hand and shouted that they didn't have time and they should leave. Jim asked Mia why they didn't have time and why they rushed so quickly. Then the girl said that soon nerve gas would begin to spread across the island, which would eventually fill the entire island, and they could not stay in one place for long. The guy was surprised what kind of gas this was. Then he asked what else the girl considered necessary to hide from him. Mia pointed straight up and said that they should run in the direction of that plane. At that moment, two red boxes were thrown out of the plane. Jim was happy because it was air support. Suddenly, one of the players appeared from behind and said that most of the participants already had top equipment other than theirs. Since the guy said so, the couple decided that he was offering his head in exchange for theirs. In one of the locations, where it was necessary to cross the river, there was a bridge where one team of players was already waiting for the others and preparing an ambush. At one point, a car drove onto the bridge, moving towards the players, and they opened fire on the opponent. After several accurate shots, the car exploded like a powder keg and turned over on its axis several times. The guys were happy about this, because having taken an advantageous position on this bridge, they could easily deal with those who wanted it and get the top equipment thrown out of the plane. The team was satisfied with this plan, and this time they must become champions. Looking through binoculars, they again saw some movement. The guys got ready and were already waiting in ambush, but at one point something went wrong. When they looked, they saw a herd of naked men running towards them, carrying another participant in the game. They threw the poor guy full of explosives straight into the team that was in ambush. The team suddenly opened fire in all directions as their checkpoint began to be surrounded from all sides. Suddenly, Jim's team ran across the bridge. They were wearing a large number of body armor because it seemed to them that one would not be enough, and they put on ten. When the fight calmed down, the guys looked at the pile of corpses and said that from the point of view of deceit and intrigue, they were just bronze medalists. Finally, the couple got to the treasured red box, and they were looking forward to what they put there this time. Opening the drawer, the girl discovered a portable, invisible safe. Jim was very surprised by the safe, because it looked like an exact copy of his small vault. The girl said that she had seen such a safe in one of the scientific journals. She talked about storage technology through compressing objects to nano sizes with an optical stealth function, and here you could put anything you wanted, and it would be well hidden. This safe is a basic version of his chest. Mia shouted that since she was the first to see him, she took him and everything was fair. But this was the last thing that worried Jim, because perhaps the one who created this chest also had something to do with the protagonist's system. At one point, Mia looked up and screamed that something was wrong here, because the airdrops had become too frequent. Jim said that despite the fact that this was his first time here, he had a gut feeling that something was wrong here. At this moment, the zone began to step on the heel of the main character. The circle began to narrow. They urgently needed to change the location. Jim wondered if this survival game was always so disgusting, because the circle continued to narrow without stopping. At one point, the girl realized that they were not fast enough for this zone, and her clothes began to slowly tear off her body. Then the main character grabbed the girl in his arms and said that from now on he would carry her and turned on the turbo acceleration. Jim asked what happened. Could ancient martial arts really help? The girl asked Jim to close his mouth and run faster. For the guy, this was illogical because the circle was accelerating with him as if someone was making fun of him. After these words, the main character heard loud clapping of his hands and one silhouette on the stone praised the guy, saying that he was really good. The guy somehow came out of the stone and noted that Jim was really not bad, and it was a pity that he realized it too quickly. Team Jim and Mia were right in front of this man, and they shouted in surprise, Was he really the creator of this game? This guy's name was James. He was born into a strong research family. 
His great-grandfather was one of the Qing dynasty members who studied abroad, and his family consisted entirely of intellectuals. The guy is the only one from the fourth generation who is involved in scientific research. He is called the Lord of Science. He went to college when he was 13 and became a doctor at 15, and now at 22 he is a professor emeritus. His patents and inventions brought him a lot of money and fame, and no one knows how much he has. Mia said that if Jim seriously stole his money, then he must return it to him. The guy was surprised, because how can you return something that has already been spent a long time ago? James was surprised by the guy's words that he was directly admitting this fact. The main character spoke very impudently and said that he already knows where he spent everything and why should he still be afraid. But the guy's real thoughts at that moment were such that he couldn't make him angry, because if he was the creator of the system, then Jim could easily lose everything. But the guy reassured Jim by saying that he didn't need money. For him, it was just a small change, and he came here for one purpose— he was interested in how the main character found a bug in the system he created. Then the guy calmed down, because he realized that James did not know about his system. Jim replied that it was a huge secret, and if he wanted to find out about it, he would have to try. The guy immediately understood what the main character was talking about. He agreed to defeat him in programming, in invention, or in everything else. Jim was very surprised by this answer because he was going to say that he just needed to pay him. But James didn't fully believe this and didn't want to buy into it, because the guy doesn't look like a dirty pig who only has money on his mind. In all this chaos, Mia was present, doing nothing and hoping that she would not suffer the consequences. James said that he had already blocked his own account, and money no longer affected them, and now they could fight honestly, and invited Jim to pit his knowledge against each other in a duel. Then the main character thought that the money that the system gave him belonged to James, at this moment, the system was blocked and Jim was left without money, which made him very upset. The main character was very angry at this act and attacked his opponent. James said that the guy was very determined but too naive. He added that he would wait for Jim in the last round and suggested having fun with his guys. When the creator of the game disappeared, a bunch of soldiers appeared in his place, ready to fight. Mia screamed that she would try to break through but she needed someone to cover her rear. But when the girl turned around, she noticed Jim running straight towards the zone. When the guy ran in, he realized that it was a fake circle, just like the usual hologram of James. Then Jim thought that if he was right, then the resources in the drop were sorted by him. He shouted to the girl that there was something wrong with the chest and she should be careful. The bright flash in my back pocket began to grow at an instantaneous speed and immediately exploded. Jim couldn't believe that James could act so ruthlessly. Was it really so important for him to defeat him that he even put a bomb in the airdrop? He carefully put the baby down. The guy was surprised because in this game they only use rubber bullets. How could he kill Mia in a game like this? Jim got very angry. He took what came to his hand and went to the last zone to avenge Mia. The main character has come a long way, from explosions in the back to crazy motorcycle races, and finally he got to the last zone. As soon as the guy got into the zone, he shouted for James to get out. At that moment, the creator of the game appeared and asked the main character to take his time with this and wait for the others to arrive. But Jim resolutely replied that he was not going to wait because there was no one left here except him. The main character bribed all the participants in the competition. He offered one money for a car and kindly asked the other to take the money and leave from here. Jem turned to James and said that he must understand that everything that is decided by money is a big trifle. Then the guy replied that, to be honest, he can do that too, and if that's all, then he won't be able to defeat him. Jim asked, since the creator of the game is in the top one list of all players, why should he get a victory over him? Then the guy mercilessly shouted that he was going to beat not only him, but also his friends, family, acquaintances, and everyone who stood in his way. James asked if the guy was finally ready to show his true strength. At this point, Jim raised his hands and said he was giving up. But James was not satisfied with this turn of events, and he was not even going to give him the opportunity to leave. Then the guy reminded Jim about Mia and asked if he was going to avenge her. The main character smiled and replied that she must take revenge for herself. At that moment, Mia suddenly appeared from behind and, with a frying pan in her hand, attacked the creator of the game. 
James couldn't believe it because he was sure that he had killed her and immediately received a strong blow to the head with a frying pan. After the girl dealt with James, she asked when Jim managed to become a doctor because she felt a wonderful surge of strength even more than when she came here. Jim smiled because he knew that he had to thank the system, thanks to the fact that the more he bought, the stronger he became, and then the guy used the revival token. The main character remembered that the price for such a purchase was $100 million, and even thanks to a 70% discount on the first purchase, Jim's funds were not enough, and he had to sell all his property and even take out an interest-free trust loan from the system, all for the sake of some girl. The guy added that he wouldn't have bought all this if it weren't so expensive. It's just money, useless banknotes, and Jim did everything for the sake of one beautiful girl. After these words, Mia's heart began to beat sharply, her pulse quickened, her cheeks turned red and she didn't know what to say in response. Jim suggested leaving the flowers for later, because they had not yet finished with the main thing. In fact, James is just a robot he designed. At that moment, Jim looked at the cyborg killer and with fear in his eyes, imagined what kind of fight he would have next. 